right, here we are. Welcome to the Windbreakers podcast, everyone. I'm Yancy Croshaw. I'm joined by Sebastian Ruiz. It's uh, me, Sebastian. And yeah. Marty Slaver. I did them in or, the other or, order that time. I know, threw us for a loop. And uh, this week we're talking about, uh, well, before we get into the topic, I had a quick question for the chat. Um, you know those large inflatable things that children jump on with their shoes off? What do you call that in your culture? I think you would like rent for a birthday party or a bat mitzvah. Yeah. yeah. A bat mitzvah. Yeah, at a mm-hmm. carnival. I remember there was a fundraiser when I was in school that always do fundraising so that you could actually get to bounce in the bastard. Yeah. Uh, bounce there you house. Go. Bouncy castle. Bouncy castle. Bounce house. Bouncy a lot castle. of bounce houses. A lot of bounce yeah. houses. It might be an American yeah. thing. Yeah. See, I would have called it a bouncy castle uh, in the UK parlance. And most Americans seem to call it a bounce house. But in Australia, they call it a moon jump oh, or a moon bounce. And my wife, has... was calling it, my wife was calling it an astro jump for a while, but uh, we don't know what she's on. See, Richard Wells says bounce castle or jolly jump. I like jolly jump. That's a new one, a jolly jump. Jolly, yeah, that's a new one. Hopborg. I forgot we get so many Scandinavians <laughs> on, in these chats. Oh, I like to think there was an ancient one, <laughs> like an older one. It was all <laughs> sheep skin and hop-borg. someone blowing on the damn thing. Yeah. It's only a hop-borg. Hop-borg. If, it's got, if it's got turrets, it's a Hopborg. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, it. yes, we're talking about remakes this week. Mm-hmm. I've got a hot take for you guys. You ready? I'm ready. I think there are a lot of remakes in popular culture. Yeah. <laughs> By seas, by I, I, I agree. Yeah. yeah. Oh. It's because we're afraid of dying and we're afraid of anything new. By we're afraid of our own job. mortality. Yeah. But what everyone always complains about is that the big studios only want to remake stuff that was good in the first place. Because, you know, that's got the name recognition. Mm-hmm. Well, it's dangerous, of... isn't it? You know, it's, it didn't sell the first time. How about now? Like that. Well, quite. Well, you know, Resident Evil 4 sold perfectly well the first time. Everyone yeah. loved it. They remade it anyway. One. Silent Hill 2, Metal Gear Solid 3, what are we doing? Why are we remaking yeah. those games? Exactly. Because our point for this uh, podcast is that surely, intellectually, it makes more sense to remake stuff that didn't quite reach their potential the first time. It's a free idea, after all. Yeah, we're more tr- treating the original idea as a sloppy copy. Do you guys oh, use yeah. the term sloppy copy? Am I still the only one? Yeah, uh, nice a bit well, more. I, I do feel a little bit uncomfortable every time you say it. Okay, uh, yeah. So we're treating we, a game that we could treat as a sloppy copy, and then come back to for one reason or another, and be like, "Hey, now in the year 2024, it would be good to revisit this with modern eyes." Yeah. So I suppose my uh, textbook example, re- uh, relevantly, would be Beyond Good and Evil. Which I reviewed, retro reviewed in uh, fully ramblematic. Oh, I nearly called it by the other name for a second. Oh there. no! <laughs> my Getting tongue was yeah. pressing against the roof of my mouth, all ready for it. Fully ramblematic retro review, because in replaying it, uh, like, because it's a it's a popular game with like people who like retro games. I've always thought pretty highly of it, but it's when Jim I was Mate's replaying favorite it, favorite game ever. I know mm-hmm. he said that. Yeah. And while I was replaying it, I had this uncomfortable sense of this is actually not very good. I don't think this has held up very well at all. I mean, even at the, for the time, it's really incredibly cut down. And I just thought, forget sequels. I want to see the original developers just make what their original vision was. Because there's so much that's obviously missing from the game. Because there's a bit where they say, oh, you need 30 pearls to unlock the next upgrade that will unlock the next part of the story. By the way, here's a room containing 15 pearls that we're just going to give you. For no reason. Hey, nowadays, you'd have to swipe the credit card in that, you know, for the, yeah. for the 30 pearls. Uh, come back in later. Because that's mm. in the review. That game is full of unrealized potential. It's got good characters, but they don't really go into detail in any of them. They're really fun and expressive, and all the voice actors seem to be, like, on something that's made them very excitable. Right. If they <laughs> redone it, what do you think they could hit on? What, what, what one thing could, like, offer the most... I guess the resurgence of life to this game. I guess I want to see the original vision for the world more than anything else. Because okay. it's an open world ease elder sort of game. Uh, and it's got a really like small micro open world with like one city with one house you can go into. 
it's it's funny because that's one of those games that when you said you were going to re-review it and or review it uh, a retro review and then you were like oh, i was kind of underwhelmed by it my immediate response was how dare you and then my follow-up yeah. was i have not played the game in 20 years and so i'm basing it solely on my memory of the game which was like this is perfect no flaws at all but i bet if i went back and replayed it i'd share a lot of the thoughts you have and a lot of the criticisms about man things have changed a lot in two decades and uh this game may have been uh, ahead of its time in a lot of ways at the time, but uh, there is a lot of quality of life and technical uh, advancements over the past two decades that um, could improve a thing like this. So you're not going to play it, is what you're saying? You're not going to well, play it again? So, leave it, no, the leave thing it is, nice they and are, listening. Yeah. They're, re- they're like <laughs> remastering it this year. Like sure, Not like a yeah. full-on. That's when we get into the whole, what is all the different rewords, uh, remaster, yeah. remake, reimagining, re-release. Um, I don't know. Again, I don't think it's going to be remade in in like Resi Four remake or anything. But I think they're maybe sprucing it up, giving it some widescreen. Yeah, I mean oh. it's. Well, I was wondering why they haven't done that sooner. I mean, they did a HD re-release for Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty and PS Three. Yeah, uh, but apparently you can still run that on like Xbox One. But uh, yeah. who the fuck's got Xbox One? I don't. Well, I, I do, do, but I don't think I've ever unpacked it. You just <laughs> like I moved into this house in like uh like four or five years ago, and I never felt a re- felt I had any reason to unpack the expo in all that time. It's just there's a thing holding up my monitor right now. It's my Xbox yeah. One. You could play a six month old build of Pal World on Game Pass. And I kind of suspect that maybe they've been hedging on remastering it just because they realize it just how cut down it feels when you actually play it. Like if, yeah. like, if you actually, uh, there's a lot you'd have to apologize for if, if people played it now. It's like, yeah, we were going to have more stuff here, but we just uh, couldn't be bothered. Yeah, yeah. there's also, I, I was talking about this before we went live, but I was kind of, when, when we chose this as a topic, I started to think of like reasons to remake something other than we could just do this. Uh, people loved it the first time, so let's just run it back and make it prettier and, and sell a bunch of copies like Resi 4 Remake. And yeah. one of the things is kind of reintroducing a thing that was like to a new generation. So trying to revitalize a yeah. franchise. So if they are still actually working on Beyond Good and Evil 2, it would make sense for them to get a version of Beyond Good and Evil 1 that a, a modern 12-year-old could pick up and play and not be like, you gross 20-year-old cooties. Yeah, see, the um, problem, yeah, because the problem with the original is that in, when the, in case, uh, in the world of introducing it to the new generation, is it was ahead of its time, but there's also plenty of games now that do what it does a lot better. Mm. Like, it's, uh, it's ahead of its time in that it's got a bunch of different gameplay aspects you can indulge in. It's got stealth, it's got combat, it's got chase sequences, it's got cinematic chase sequences, it's got racing, but there are a lot of games that, like, manage all that uh, a hell of a lot better a lot of like uh the uh, combat element is very uh undercut in beyond Good Evil. it's basically just mash attack mm-hmm. wow sucking so back to the future where he says you you your kids are gonna love it when he's talking about his rock music right yeah, yeah. but you kind of have to you have to make it right you have to make it again because that, it falls into that almost like in the crack in the couch of too ahead of my time but now i'm i'm behind and outdated yeah because now, yeah, that's now you a just shot to go Absolutely. I, uh, those, I are, yeah, those are where my games are. Yeah. I think I would just want to see Beyond Good and Evil as it is, all of it as it currently is, but with all the stuff that was intended for it in now. Mm. Like, I don't care about making it look better. I think, I mean, look at it now. Look at like that video there. I think it looks fine. Sure. It's tiny. Yeah. And it's got, it's, a, it's got a really strong art style to it that mm, I think yeah. um, holds up over time. It's got, a sort of, it's got that sort of Wind Waker slightly cartoonish look that ages a lot better than uh, more realistic graphical styles. Yeah. I could see an indie developer remaking that soon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just oh, yeah, we're, we're starting to get those games that were inspired by, like, later and later games. Like, we're in that sort of Dreamcast early aughts era of people being inspired by your, your Silent Hills, your uh, yeah. uh, colorful platformers of the time. So I could, I could absolutely imagine that. One thing, if if they were to give this a redo, a remake, um, in a hypothetical world. Would you want to keep 
as many people from the same team as possible. Granted, twenty in twenty years, the industry changes a lot. But this was the Ubisoft Montpellier team, who ironically would go on to develop Prince of Persia: The Lost Crown, which is your fully ramblematic this week. So a strange little kind of one-two combo for you. Oh, it's like already been remade then in spirit. There's yeah. like <laughs> exactly, exactly. Whoa. So like, what do you? But it's also hard to like bring the band back together, right? Like, does it make more sense to have people who maybe grew up and loved the game? as a kid and are now developers well, yeah yeah on the one hand having people who loved the original making the remake or the sequel always tends to create this air of the work being too much in love with itself mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah i've always found that a problem with new doctor who it's made by fans of the original and now it's all just did too much in love with itself but on the other That's... hand i hear the original uh, visionary behind the game uh, mike uh, Mike michelle, michelle Ansel, Ansel. It, was apparently kind of a dick, and nobody liked working with him. Yeah, he's had some 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 scandals and some scuttlebutts, so he's kind of uh, backed, <laughs> gone, like faded into the background a little bit. Yeah, uh, he did make uh, Peter Jackson's King Kong the movie, the game though, which uh, was excellent. In yeah, my... I heard that was surprisingly good. Yeah, best Gosh, launch game for the 360. I'm so confused because I remember playing it. In a Walmart, back when you could like walk into the store and play the game like demo and whatnot. And play it. This was the yeah. first time I was, I, I didn't move because it's the first time I'd seen a game without a HUD or anything. And it looked so realistic. I yeah. was like, what's happening? And, and then I touched the analog and it went off. I was like, what? Yeah. what's happening? But then I go back and see gameplay of it. I was like, was I like just not all there as a child? Yeah, These you were just young. Were... You were young and you were I easily guess. amazed. Is it tiny eyes? You know, the less pixels are okay <laughs> exactly. on tiny eyes. Like, yeah. What's happening? Uh, it's, yeah, it's interesting that you bring up the sort of different people uh, making it because uh, probably the highest profile remake uh, of the moment is the Final Fantasy VII remake project, mm-hmm. which, uh, you know, is a is a huge departure both in terms of visuals and gameplay, but also in what they are doing. Where it is not a remake, uh, more so as kind of a, a kind of a postmodern commentary on the original game. Uh, yeah. But a ton of the leads on the game were leads on the original game. Like Square has is one of those companies, like a lot of Japanese studios, that hasn't had a ton of turnover in a lot of those mm. creative leads. So folks who worked on the original game are working on these new ones, and so. That is combined with again the fresh eyes of of uh, other other folks who grew up loving these things to sort of create this, um, I guess a little little melting pot of, of talent who sees the original game kind of differently. Well, you know that's getting into the original topic of uh, why remake stuff that was good in the original, and when you when you do that, I suppose taking a sort of uh, deconstructive approach is one way to approach that. Yeah, and you you see that with creators uh, as they get distance from you know, uh, less so in games I think, but more so if you look at uh, Anno's uh, Evangelion rebuilds, he kind of like went back and was like, I have now gone through therapy for twenty years, so here is my thought on on when I was very sad in the nineties. Yeah, see, there's so many bloody things vying for your attention in the world of pop culture. Like, I don't really want to waste time just looking at someone's redo. I'd rather stuff be fine the first time. Oh man, strict dad, right. you. You want to go to a therapist? That's great. I applaud you. Just don't force everyone else to sit in. But what if you want to show me your therapy through giant robots fighting each other? Because people do that, will be okay with that, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think how... you just make another thing about giant robots fighting each other. But I like the original one. It's yeah, like the Bioshock um... guys. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, honestly, Ken Levine kind of making a next game that isn't Bioshock, but is. Not we have Bioshock at home, but you know Judas is very much sort of that same yeah. idea, but looked at through a lens twenty years later. Yeah, we don't count Prey as a remake of Prey because Prey no. is a very different game to Prey. No, Prey was is... one thing, and Prey was quite another. Prey is different from Prey. Prey, too. Yeah, naming, fucking naming okay. conventions. Um, aside from the kind of revitalizing a franchise uh, monetarily, the other the, the three main reasons I had for. Yeah, what I would dub like good reasons to remake games, uh, in, framed in this conversation would be, the games like we said the games were kind of bad, uh, but had a kernel of a good idea in them that we could explore. Mm-hmm. Uh, the game is uh, lost the time either because of rights dispute or because of the platform it was on. I'm thinking a lot of stuff like uh, a DS or a 3DS game that is kind of like really hard to play 
nowadays. Yeah, so yeah, well, pirating and emulation will will uh, fill the gap there. Yeah, but even like a DS and 3DS, like the, the, a lot of those games are so specific to the hardware that mm. like I don't, I am fine with pirating and emulating. I've I've played uh, emulated <laughs> DS games. You just use the mouse. You're using the mouse. That is that is some PC virgin shit. I don't like it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Get needed, lads. All right, we say this, but it's like with Steam reselling the um the old Disney games, and now they have that like weird rewind feature. Same thing for the old Switch games, where mm -hmm. you know just a, just an added feature to kind of take the old bite. I I know some people say, oh, it's not like the original. It's like yeah, but the original intent was to get as many quarters out of me. Mm. Yeah. So I'm okay. Yeah. I'm okay with this, like band aid yeah. fixing some of the holes that we kind of put in, because times yeah. have changed. Philosophy has, has have changed as well. What was your third yeah. one? Yeah, so what was uh, the third of the three? The third of the three was uh, the the increase in technology from then to now would make that thing super red. Which, yeah, like, see, that's that's why I that's why I supported the Resident Evil Two remake, so or even the Resident, Resident Evil One remake, remake. Even though it was only a few years, like that leap yeah. into the GameCube version was like, ooh, this is yeah. this is pretty big. And then yeah, Resi Two is a great example. Because yeah. PlayStation graphics kind of not so easy on the eyes these days. I know it triggers the nostalgia brain for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, Resident Evil 2 remade into full-on Resident Evil 4 style. If that you take off me. your specs, it's like the same, you know? Yeah. Like you get it's away the with that. It's the Spider-Man meme. It's the <laughs> Peter Parker Resident Evil, yeah. the <laughs> Resident Evil 4 remade into Resident Evil 4 style. Not quite the, the, you know, the world-changing quantum leap uh, that you need. Here's a question for you. Do you think they're going to remake Resident Evil 5 and 6? Oh my goodness! It's like Moana, yes. isn't it? Oh where, man, where do we go from here? Unless they go back to zero or the original Resident Evil, which seems yeah. silly, or maybe they, See, they pivot to Code Veronica. I don't think they're gonna do five and six. I think they're gonna do Code Veronica, but five and six just don't have that nostalgia value that the, fuels uh, the other remake, the rest of the games in the remake series. I just I hope they redefine Resident again because that that was silly to me. The first few games it was big military fighting fascist corpos, and then the next the Resident Evil is literally evil within a residence in a farmhouse. So I was like, all right, what's yeah, a, what's yeah. a different way we could we could do Resident Evil? I you know? think Resident Evil Six might be a good example of a game that could be good with a remake it could be a kind of victory lap that takes all of the dumb characters we've grown to know and love uh throughout this series and gives them kind of a different flavored like a neapolitan globe trotting adventure that just doesn't uh, screw the pooch yeah. in the story what I, are you saying resident evil to you doesn't immediately bring to mind neapolitan globe trotting adventure Buddy, I'd argue that trying to have all the characters at once in the Globetrotting Adventure is how the story's screwed up in Resident <laughs> Evil 6. I think that's true. But what if we do it well? I don't no, know how, but what if we do it well? I don't um, think you I don't think you could. I think like well, you know, history has shown us that Resident Evil becomes good again when it learns how to, you know, pull itself back down. Back. It's like put some restraint in. Uh, the but, the Resident Evil Six story is just an enormous tangled mess with too many, with too much like callbacks to the whole tangled mess of the series, uh, which exposes the fact that the none of the series' ongoing plot makes the slightest fucking sense. So been a prologue done. Why? Where, yeah, where Resident Evil works is when it focuses on like a little nugget of the overarching yeah. scenario when it's just one dude trying to escape from a spooky house. It's like Cloverfield, isn't it? Paradox versus the other one. Well, like yeah. one's the big monstrosity yeah. and the other one's just uh, atrocities in a tunnel. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I don't know. There's something I appreciate about uh, a, a big swing for the fences and a miss. And Resident <laughs> Evil 6 is a big old, like, I, if I make contact with this, I'm going to destroy this ball. And oh my God, I swung so early on this. <laughs> yeah. And I think uh, an another game that fits in that is in our uh, 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 episode art in Sonic Ooh. 06. No. I think Sonic 06, that could have that could have been it. That could have that, that could have been Yuji Naka's uh, yeah, uh yeah. I remember join I joined the Discord call this morning and the first image I saw in the fourth like uh, webcam slot was fucking yeah, that one. That is. Fucking <laughs> Sonic getting a big fat smooch from a realistically proportioned human character. And that was like that was like 
the fulcrum around which the entire narrative of the Sonic franchise now rotates. It snapped on that. It should have been Knuckles. You're right. Just redo <laughs> that all over again. Well, he, well, he certainly <laughs> looks like he's feeling left yeah, out. Like, there, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, which is funny because fans have taken it into their own hands to remake uh, this in Project 06. Uh, I've heard about 06, that, yeah. I mean, you can which... certainly make the game not play like absolute dog shit. But how sure. Gonna, how are they going to get around Sonic being snogged by a realistically proportioned human lady? Maybe we as a society are just more um, uh, accustomed to that. We're more forgiving of that. We're more accepting of that in the year 2024. Or maybe you are. See, I watched Roger Rabbit, and at the end, you have Eddie, a man, kissing Roger. You know? It's, it's I think that's there's a quite significant difference in tone between those two moments. He has well. his humanity back, but I agree. They should have a kissing frog thing, and he's not a hedgehog anymore. That would just explain everything. Oh, he's actually oh, oh, cursed. And he just turns into a render of Yuji Naka. <laughs> oh, you want to turn it? You want to turn it into the Casper the Friendly Ghost live action movie? There you go. Oh, you know. the Where he snogs a back, living yeah. human girl in the end. Whom amongst and us does not kiss the ghost? I can't. I couldn't tell. You're not wrong. Well, all of us could be kissing thousands of ghosts at any given moment, I suppose. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, I have, a, I have a big list of games, but for us, like, what, what, what's kind of your, your thought on the philosophy of this whole Whew. remake shenanigans? I don't know if you covered it in your three specifically, or it's mm -hmm. just a choice of wording here. I would say um, when a franchise kind of divulged in a way, and then they, 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 they grew scared of it, I would like to see Mortal Kombat Deception again. This like, all right, mm -hmm. fighting game, but now it's gone to open world. And they just go, we'll do one more with Armageddon? Right? And then never do that again. It's like, no, 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 come on. It's time to get freaky with it. Like, you were well, fine. Yeah. You, just didn't, you didn't stick to it. You didn't really go with it. Well, you know? modern Mortal Kombat certainly doesn't seem to know what the fuck it wants to do anymore. Because it rebooted the plot twice. Sure. The, new, the latest game tries to do the bit from Mortal Kombat Armageddon where all the characters fight, but it mm. feels really unearned. So I, I, I didn't know Mortal Kombat Deception was an open world. How did that work? Uh... From what I hear, the same as Armageddon. Um, how did it? It was like I guess it was one of the first open worldy RPGs that I could play, and it had all those all those tropes of just like, oh, I'm walking through, and there's this old man saying, you know, I lost a ring in a cave once. If you could, you know, just you reminisce. Go in that cave and rip some heads off. No, he, he doesn't tell you to go. You just like, oh, I found this ring in a cave. It's like, oh, that was my wife's. You killed her. No, like sometimes <laughs> it does do that. That like weird mistaken identity. The story writing was pretty good on that, but. It's, it's sort of like, a, not level-based, but it's different planets that you're going through and, and you're aging okay. through as it tells this big story. And then you, you, you fight in the dojos or you're training with somebody. It really ties, the, like, the, like the, you want to have a story and you want to fight, okay, there's a little something we need to do to tack those on together instead of just cutscene, fight, cutscene, fight, as the everything yeah, else the does. Ones. Yeah. Was there anything like Street Fighter VI? Uh, I hear, I it. hear that. Um, it's not not exactly there, but like the bones, sure. Skin was a yeah. bit different. Yeah. Yeah, it the way you it feels it. like you could, you know, I I can't remember exactly when Deception and Armageddon were, but I feel like they were in the shadow of of sort of the rise of like God of War and and the character action spectacle fighter genre with Devil May Cry and and Onimusha and and that kind of stuff, Bayonetta. Um, and it feels like the characters and the world and the violence and the bombast of Mortal Kombat could fit in that. Like, I don't think the series needs to be a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, 2D fighter, like 2D plane fighter. It feels oh, like they could that too. This was a, this was a, it had an extra plane. It did the Tekken thing. Yeah, but it, like, it feels like it could just be more of like a, a big, like, spectral fighter character action game. Like, you have your character running through the world and beating up trash mobs and then you fight a big cool boss and then there's big cinematic set pieces like i don't know that it feels like that would make sense to me in the mortal Kombat world but that's coming from someone who isn't like a massive mortal Kombat fan yeah i don't think there's... you do any like fighting that's not in the structured sense you know of, like, yeah there's the a lot of seems like one-on-one -on -one fighting games have struggled with the notion of trying to create like campaigns yeah, yeah. soul calibers yeah. tried it before and it's been kind of wonky because ultimately what the audience actually wants from it in the end is just one-on-one -on -one fights so that they can oh. play it at evo yeah. yeah i think this is sort of like the uh, the hades of mortal Kombat. 
where the gameplay maybe isn't stellar, but the way that they handle their narrative and combine it with the gameplay was a lot better. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know, I'd take one of those again over the just, we're fighting for some reason because the cutscene demands yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah nope. And those are games that, as far as I know, you can't just easily get on a modern console or, or PC, right? Like, I don't think no. you can just download those games and just play them now. So they are kind of lost the time, which we've seen a couple, um, the past few years, I feel like the remakes that have really stood out to me, other than like, I enjoyed Resident Evil 4 remake stuff like, uh, near replicant a few years ago, which, which, um, in the wake of the success of near automata remade the original near near gestalt. Mm. Um, and so it was like, f- people who the vast majority of people who came into the franchise of Automata were able to be like, Oh, I could play the earlier game and its story does directly tie in. And like it, it, you know, it unshackled it from the PS3 and 360 era and, and had a lot of uh, modern quality of life improvements, which were great. Uh, Live Alive was another one. That's the Square Enix RPG that came out a few years ago that, um, that game had never been localized in the West. And so they, they, um, did that and then also uh gave it that 2.5d sheen um mm. which made it really great to play and then even i was talking about the ds stuff this weekend i started playing another memory recollection which is a remake of the ds game that was called trace memory in the u.s but i think called another memory everywhere else but anyways again uh it's sort of like a point a hotel dusky phoenix righty kind of adventure game yeah, that utilized yeah. the two screens had interesting things where you would like blow the dust off something by blowing on your screen or making oh, a stamp by yeah, closing the chest. yeah um <laughs> but uh they they remade them and spiffed them up for the switch and of course you had to get rid of some of those um gimmicky things but uh it was a way to play those games that you know outside of 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 stealing them and using your mouse um it was kind of impossible now so i appreciated that yeah mm-hmm. i think the the holy grail of a remade game is where you put it out and people go oh i didn't know that was a remake there you go. Yeah. Like, so, um, did you know uh, 1985 by Bowling for Soup was a cover song? I did not know. I, just I, didn't, I didn't know that. Cover. It just it just really feels like their song. It really does. Yeah. Yeah. You even have movies like that. People like. I, I feel like about the mummy. People get, people get fun fact. You got the you got Brendan Fraser's Mummy. You got the oh. thing. John Carpenter's thing. People are like. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize that was a that was a remake. Um. Did you know uh, uh, that um, uh, Dennis Nilsson's Without You was a cover song? Yeah, Can't live. Oh, no. I, 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 only, without you. I only know the original. That was, a, that was a cover of a punk band song. Uh, a punk band called Badfinger, I think. Uh, and uh, by the time it was covered, I think both of the original members of Badfinger had both committed suicide. Oh, so that it, do, was, yeah. it was fine to cover it and make the sort of iconic version everyone knows. Well done, mm-hmm. Mr. Nilsson, you oh. bastard. Yeah, it's like what, Johnny Cash is hurt? Sure. Just well, like, I, oh, I, I knew that was a Nine Inch Nails song. Yes, yeah, so. but even Trent Reznor was like, that's his song now. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> nice. Can't have this anymore. Yeah, I was like I'm never gonna sing this ever again. It's um, it's also funny to look at. Uh, uh, another thought I had was uh, the, the the studios and the publishers that are remaking sometimes feel like they're remaking the wrong thing. Um, mm, sure. like we're getting that Persona Three Reload uh, that's coming out in like a week and a half, and I'm excited for that. But I look and I'm like, Persona Three is still pretty playable across the various versions. Persona One and Two, not so much. So, like, what if you went back to those those earlier games and gave them the modern treatment as opposed well, to... Well, um, you'd need to completely remake it from the ground up because the only thing anyone knows about Persona these days is that they're life sim RPG hybrids, and that was not the case in Persona 1 and 2. It was Persona 3 that introduced the life sim stuff. So too much work? They just don't want to do it because they're lazy? Crikey. Lazy devs? Okay. Lazy devs. <laughs> Classic lazy devs. Yeah, it's always the... Uh, was, do you think Mario Sunshine would yeah. make a good remake? No, that one holds up still. In fact, it's the jank that yeah, like, kind of keeps say, it going. I don't think Mario would Mario would do remakes generally because Mario just reinvents himself for every generation. Yeah, that's that's what he does. When I was replaying Mario Sunshine, I thought to myself, imagine this game, the aesthetics, the flood idea, the the vibes of Delfino Island, but having actual control over Mario and the camera like I do in Mario Odyssey. 
that got me excited. Well, Nintendo's not gonna play, it's fine. You just play Mario Odyssey then. Yeah, just play Mario Odyssey. I want to be on a cool cool. island and I want to I want to This is not an island. Play the play the beach level of Super Mario Odyssey. (laughs) What the Delfino? It it is it is difficult to strike that like that faithfulness, but also like why not just play the older one? Like me, I have some where I'd go, I would remake this game, which is modern trends, so to speak, like uh, Dynasty Warriors. What was those called like Muso fighters or something? Muso's, yeah, yeah. I, I, would, I just think I would, of them as Dynasty Warriors like games. Yeah, that, there you go. Yeah, I would do that, but I would combine it with all the vampire survivor stuff of like all the constant perks and whatnot. We're using these like all our tech for better graphics. How about lesser graphics but more bodies flying at me? I've made that very point. Well, in, there you uh, go. Semi ramblematic in the past. So, so, yeah, why don't you just like create a game where the graphics aren't so great, but you just fight 10 million dudes on a Dyson Sphere? Hell yeah. Or everything yeah. breaks. Destructibility. Give me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let, let me break the planet. Yeah, but everyone's just getting prettier, and that's it. Yeah. I like oh. that. I like that. Well, Shall um... we go see what the Super Chats have to say about what games they'd like to see remade? See, what do they know about games? Super Chat. I have yeah, I have a lot of I have a lot of extra thoughts and of so many super chats. So many of these great super chats are gonna be leading me to these thoughts. We, I appreciate every single one of you who've already donated, who will be donating, and who are, will never donate. Even the haters. The haters keep us fueled. Just haters. Haters gonna hate and not give us dosh. Potatoes yeah. gonna potato yeah. Okay. So cool. <laughs> uh, I just got the super chat, so feel free to interrupt me with the member chats. Will do. Starting with Paul. Who gives two dollars and says Dark Souls Two, Resident Evil Outbreak, Right to Hell? Ooh, you see, I would almost just say yeah, do Dark Souls Two again, but let Miyazaki actually like handle well, it. They did. More so. that's, that's that's what Scholar of the First Sin was. They brought Miyazaki in to re, re to like redo all the oh, enemies. That that was. Was. Yeah, but yeah. he's like, there's only so much I can do, you know. I feel <laughs> I feel like Bloodborne was more. It goes Dark Souls to me, and then off to Bloodborne, and then in the in between was a bit off. Uh, yeah, I'd say give Dark Souls 2 another go. Well, they did. It's called Dark Souls 3. <laughs> they did it you know, correctly that time. You're not wrong. Yeah. Is, do you think well, he's one of those artists that's like, I don't, like, once he does it the first time, he's like, I don't want to do this again. I just, well, I, I feel like. I would sympathize. I mean, yeah. uh, my wife was saying, hey, when you Starstruck Vagabond's out, maybe you should think about, like, you know, doing a content update further down the line, like what the Stardew Valley guy does. I was like, I don't want to. I want to make new things that I'm excited about. You yeah. need a protege. That's what you need. A protege who can work on those content a updates. Oh, I need. I need to be. A uh, Shin- I need to be Shinji Mikami, who makes one game and then leaves the sequels to his underlings. Exactly. You need your Kamiya. That's what you need. I'd never finish anything. I was like, yeah, that's it. New me. Yeah. Off we get. Yeah. Ride to hell. So, like, truly atrocious games. Do you think they deserve another go? I think you'd just be making whatever the hell you want at that point, and then just calling it the same With title bikers. as the, the yeah, yeah, kind of like yeah. a, a biker, Lord of, a biker Lord of the game. Fallen. No, I I don't think there was a spark of potential in Right Tail Retribution. <laughs> yeah, at that point, you would just be using the name, like you said, with Lords of the Fallen, like Prey, that kind of thing. Yeah, mm, yeah, and it's a bloody awful title anyway. Why would you want to uh, use right it? Hell, oh, it's a very biker like thing. That's how bikers talk. Well, I, it's, I guess it's the retribution that's part that sends me off. Sure. I go around a lot of bikers. That's how they talk. Yeah. Talk about retribution a lot. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Jewel Row gives uh, two euros and says, another 3D version of Splatterhouse and Viva Pinata. Oh, yeah, I kind of liked the 3D yeah. Splatterhouse remake, but it was very janky and obviously needed more time in the oven. Extremely janky, yeah. Needed a lot more time in the oven, I think. But it was yeah. fun for what, for what it was. Yeah. And uh, I know Nick. Uh, Nick is a huge uh, Viva Pinata fan and is always banging the drum about bringing back those little pinatas, uh, especially just because it feels like that kind of cozy life sim farm management genre has blown up in the mm. again fifteen yeah. years since the first yeah. one, uh, and it feels like Microsoft is sitting like that could be Microsoft's Animal Crossing. Um, I mean, they're uh, kind of just uh, sitting on it. That's how I feel about Titanfall. I feel like they they came just a little too close off of the no one's gonna dethrone Call of Duty, you know. Yeah. I feel like if they try to, I mean, that's Apex Legends uh, again. <laughs> just. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. 
Uh, SVS Guerrero 2000 gave us five euros. It says an FF7 remake style remake of Terranigma. Just not chopped up into parts, please. I know the name. I, didn't, I don't know anything about Terranigma. Uh, that was the uh, quintet uh, action RPG for the Super Nintendo that was like the spiritual uh, end of the trilogy of like the Illusion of Gaia games that mm. uh, never got. Uh, never got localized into the West because I think it was a very late Super Nintendo game, and by that time Square had shut down their uh, U.S. localization offices. Um, but that is one of the earlier ga- earliest games I remember to get a fa- to get a translation via ROM, and uh, uh, or maybe it got a translation in Europe, so it was translated into English, but just never released in the U.S. But that was one of the first games I remember playing with a ROM uh, and being like, "Oh, this mm-hmm. is actually really good." Uh, for me, that game still plays really good, so they should just release that game for everyone. They should do that. That would be nice. Do are there indie indie developers that still do this thing of like, okay, I made a game and it did well. Now I'm gonna try again, but now I have money, like uh, Edmund McMillan. Oh uh, yeah, the, I'm the sure there's plenty of people doing that. Yeah, yeah we got uh, the I, I original like Spelunky to Spelunky HD. Yeah, like, yeah. It's like yeah, like Rogue Legacy done it as well. It's like, hey, look, yeah, I have, I have more money now. <laughs> Yeah, we're getting uh, weirdly enough the the Braid anniversary edition coming out in a few months. That's like well, uh, the dream, the isn't it? Of brain. I mean, okay. if we want to be do the pedantic asshole thing of saying Valve is an indie company, that's what they did with Portal. The first one was sort of like the the mm. low low scale, low budget extra thing they were doing, and they uh, when, it, when it really took off, they were able to put all their budget behind it for Portal Two. I enjoy yeah. that. It's like the paranormal activities of video games, yeah. It's like we had a camera and a hundred bucks. Now let's see what yeah. happens when we actually have backing. Yeah. I don't Apparently, think anything's ever called Portal the Paranormal Activities of Video Games. Well, you've That's heard it here now. Like I played an old Flash game. It was called Will and Sly, I think. And you know that how... guy is making yeah. it again, but with modern technology and money. There you I, love go. It. I love it. You know how you know how the end of Portal, like the final climactic encounter is just a static enemy while like poison gas fills the room? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was literally because they ran. That was the way they ran out of money. Yeah. Oh, I think they said they ran out that, of memory. That was all they could do for the yeah, for yeah. the final boss. I mean, that that's uh, Monty Python, Holy Grail. We ran out of money and we just attacked yeah. everyone. <laughs> Pretty much. I, I, I appreciate that though. It like works thematically in the game, and then you get the portal two, and it's this big bombastic, yeah. literally yeah, shoot yeah. to the moon. Yeah. yeah. Uh. Shaky 2023 gives five dollars and says Far Cry 2 deserves a redo. It had quite a few nice ideas and a good setting not yet replicated. Interesting. Yeah, yeah Far Cry is Far Cry is one of those just polish up the core concept with each sequel franchises. I think Far so, Cry 3 was still the peak for me. It's like how you guys said about Persona, saying like one and two is vastly different. That's Far Cry, yeah, right? Yeah. And like Fallout as well, you know? They, yeah. you've, got, you've got some games where they got popular in a different way. It's like the antithesis of Mortal Kombat Deception. Yeah, wasn't Far Cry 2 was almost kind of more of like an immersive sim with certain elements. Um, yeah, yeah. And it was a lot of, Far label, Cry became yeah. the open world model. And it was much less um, plot front-loaded than the Far Cry 3. Like the main yeah. character was almost like a blank slate in Far yeah. Cry 2, but it was much more, ca- much more. Although they were doing the charismatic villain thing in Far Cry the 2. Jackal? Yeah. But yeah. they Bruce really like looked more into the character. Yeah, Bruce Willis is the Jackal. <laughs> <laughs> you ever played Bruce uh, Willis's Apocalypse? Do you think they could remake Bruce Willis's Apocalypse? Don't think so. Not with Bruce Willis anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, they could do it and give him his family the money. That would be nice. Hmm. <laughs> I suppose we could just AI generate his voice. Okay, it sounds just, less nice now. I'm starting we'll to let his. Oh, if he consents, we'll just record yeah. his dementia-riddled ass for a couple no. of hours and then edit Be it down. Nice. No, use the John McClane version. So every line is just yippee ki yay, motherfucker. Use the John McCain version. Or the... <laughs> oh god, I, 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 I just disagree with him, ma'am. That's it. <laughs> Uh, uh, Dr. Theo. Theo, welcome to the tip jar, Dr. Theo, um, and a little membership. And then Dr. Theo gives a super chat with $5 and says, I've always had this dream of a game company where their whole thing is remaking bad games into something good. It can be the actual IP or a ripoff. Uh, have you met a company I know called Night Dive, whose entire yeah. business model is putting out old games so that they actually work now? That's funny. Yeah, because yeah, you always hear of, of like plagiarism, right? What if you plagiarize bad games and you make them good? Is that just reselling thrift or 
Was it yeah, flipping? Are you just flipping yeah, bad games? I mean, just find find games where the rights just don't exist at all, and you just take them and uh, yeah, flip them. Yeah, well, it feels like a sort of like a producer's situation where if the originals are flop, you just count on nobody giving a shit about it to legislate yeah. it from that point forward. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Easy peasy. Okay, um, yeah, you also see. Look, I I like the fact that there's companies like. Uh, like limited run and and like you mentioned, uh, Night Dive Studios, uh, bringing old franchises back to the forefront. Like we're getting the Gex trilogy back. No one asked for the Gex what? trilogy. No one asked In for the that. Modern Gex. day. This what? is the year the Gex is coming back. And let me tell yeah, you, I, he had some off-colored remarks, and people did he know? know. Yeah, that's, that's oh, what yeah. Like, oh, I want. No. My dream is to take old games and make them woke. That's what I'm gonna yeah. do. Oh no, big, Gex is big, gonna get canceled. Gex oh, either yeah. has to no. go woke or get canceled. There's only there's no no two ways about it. I'm There's literally two ways about it. Never mind. There's yeah. literally two ways. Uh, BS Marsh gives five dollars and says, "I didn't realize this, but we need many more Marty and Frost readings." That was a peach. We uh, yeah. had a little collab with the, the Darren Mooney backdrop mm-hmm. that just dropped. Go watch that. Right yeah, now. go watch what? that. It's about the wind rises and uh, uh, Yahtzee played Hayao Miyazaki, and I played a man <laughs> interviewing Hayao Miyazaki about his his love of women's breasts. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. Relatable content. Yeah. Uh, Jingle Boy 14 gives 25 British pounds and says, Good evening, gentlemen. Happy to contribute to Adventures Nigh Season 4. And gentle question for all Do you ever partake in gaming on the can? If so, what's your go to title while taking care of business? I don't uh, want to humble brag. I take quick shits. Oh, you're regular, are you? Uh, Not even see- regular. I just go in there and I just get it done. But I like my piece in there, so I'll, I'll sure, have like a yeah. match of Rainbow Six Siege going while I'm in the no, camp. No, you <laughs> won't. That's, that's a bit much. Um, I have like an idle game here or there, but that's usually my like browse Twitter because you're well, on the can, you know, just all matches. Well, I'm I'm very regular. So when I get up and I'm on the toilet doing my uh, six thirty poo, I will just that will just be my time to do today's Wordle on on the New York Times app. There you go. Something maybe for the I'll brain. do the. Maybe I'll do connections puzzle if I'm feeling sassy, and maybe also guess the game. Yeah, I've got uh, I've got an idle game usually. Okay, I've got keeping in the background. I'll just check my chickens on Egg Inc. That's do you it. think there's anyone who like brings a big, a big chunky Steam Deck into the shitter and is like, I wouldn't. Doubt I'd be, wor- I'd be worried about contaminating it with my pooey hands. Yeah. Oh, no one. Wants I'd be worried of a, of a blood clot in my ass from staying sure. there too long. Yeah. I I do have a bidet attachment, but I still have to like use a piece of toilet paper to like wipe off the last of the moisture. You could sure. bidet the Steam Deck on accident. I'm like Naughty Dog's the last of the moisture. Well, <laughs> PS5 remaster out now. I don't know. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of people having a Marvel Snap while they're taking a yeah, Marvel. Yeah, I mean, shit. I feel like phones just make sense, right? Because phones are always in your yeah. pocket. Like, I don't, yeah, you don't I'm need not to like, bring the GameCube in there. Yeah, like, yes, yeah. in there. <laughs> 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 yeah. Also, I like that the Great Mighty Pooh is here uh, in the corner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hi, Great Mighty Pooh. <laughs> yeah. I am the Great Mighty Pooh, and I'm going to throw my shit at you. A huge supply of tish comes from my chocolate starfish. How about some scat, you little twat? I know all the words. More for that. the phrase chocolate starfish, uh, rare or limp biscuit? Rare. <sighs> Uh, oh, I, I, I didn't hear the term chocolate starfish originally from either of those. Oh, chocolate starfish and hot dog flavored water. That was a Limp Bizkit uh, album. Uh huh. I believe that was their sophomore effort. Wow. See, we, you're bringing it up. I would have them redo Hell Pie, but with just better writing. The game was fine. Like, okay. make it a little less gross, call it Heck Pie? Yeah, Heck Pie. Fair so, enough. Make it make sense. Hellscone. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on. From Poo. Nicholas JM gives five dollars and says, instead of remakes, I wonder what games could benefit from somewhat late director's cuts that addresses feedback from years after release. Oh, oh yeah, the I gamers mean, Beyond, Beyond Good and Evil might be a good candidate for that sort of thing. Don't we, is, don't we all hate that now? Aren't we all mad at like a game like you just release your game? Like people bemoan yeah. the the like or they miss the era when a game that was on its disc on day one was the game and you can't make any changes to it. So well, traditionally the director's cut is called upon if there's a perception that the publishers like messed with the original vision too much, mm-hmm. like with Blade Runner. Sure, fair, but does it apply to games? 
I'm sure there are cases of publishers uh, uh, ruining the original vision of the director. Actually, yeah, Carmageddon. Um, they had to change a lot of the original carnage, like green goo, and it wasn't humans and whatnot. So I could see that, but like, I don't think you're going to get Snyder cuts nowadays. People just get mad you didn't give them the full game. Yeah, probably. Uh, the directors are also usually still imply, or employed by those studios, so they can't kind of, you know, hmm. go rogue and talk about studio meddling because usually they are the high-ranking people in the studio who are a part of the meddling. I think if anyone, it would be Jonathan Blow that would do some sort of a director's cut shenanigans. It just seems like his thing. Well, I wouldn't see Kojima do it. You, would, uh, you want him to go back and make them slightly more pretentious. Well, could Kojima make director's learned. cuts of almost all his games? Subsistence, uh, Metal Gear Solid 2, Metal Gear Solid mm. 3 had director's cuts. Um, mm. Death Stranding had a director's cut, literally called the director's cut. What the hell? Oh, there you go. Yeah, he likes to he likes to mingle. He likes to he likes to get his he likes to get his fingers in there and get them wet. I don't know. Oh, why I said well, that. let's just go on to the next one. From that delightful image, we move on to Magic Mix 2000. Who gives five British pounds and says Anacronox. They only got to make half the game they wanted to, and its use of Quake Two engine is rough. I don't Do you know, know much Anacronox about Anacronox. Is. It's I, I think it's. The game Jason Hall made. It was a very ambitious sort of RPG that was. It was a Tom Hall. I think you're thinking of Jace Hall. Oh yeah, sorry. Hall. There's there's too many halls in the world. He was a designer on Doom and Commander Keen. Oh, yes, he was... he's he was one of the old. He was one of the American McGee style guys who ate out ate out on having been part of the Doom team for the rest of his fucking life. Is it lucrative? Wanna... Do you want to know something sad? Do you want to mm. know what his last game credit was according to Wikipedia? Tell me. Uh, the lead game designer of Gordon Ramsay Dash. Ouch. Which must be a mobile <laughs> Gordon Ramsay. Yeah. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Wow. Yeah, you know what? That game go... probably sold like 10 million copies, and so he's probably fine. I've been meaning to go back and play in Acrodox because everyone talks about how it was the unrealized gem of its time. Mm. Sort of sort of like Younger Evil, sure. almost. The thing that sort of turns me off it, though, is the fact that it's uh, turn based combat. Because oh, on some like levels, that. it looks like it's going for a sort of Deus Ex sort of vibe. Yeah. But then turn-based combat. Did you play feels... Commander Keen? Did you have thoughts of Commander Keen? I know of Commander Keen. I know of it. I've never played it. So that was just ID's platform franchise before they got big making grown-up shooters. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's yeah. It's uh, apparently it was very spectacular. They were able to do side-on two D platforming in DOS at the time. Yeah, and everyone was like, "Wow!" No. And now it, it's just a platform game from the past. <laughs> just like Cave Story. There you go. Uh, snake in my boot. And gives twenty dollars and says, "When you all were part of Escapist, I really only knew who Yarts was. Since Second Wind launch design, Delve and Cold Take have been added to my list of favorite content. Full stop. Keep up the great work, dudes. Thank you, thank oh. you. Yeah, Get that thank snake you for out Jay as well. Appreciate you. What? Thank you very much. Get That's that snake out of your boot. Dan Tobias gives five dollars and says, "One game series that needs a remake is Legacy of Cain. Heck, Yarts even mentioned the first one a few weeks ago." Yeah, I went back and played it on good old games because I was curious, and it doesn't hold up terribly well. Oh, yeah, that man. was well, uh, when, you, when you were looking for a retro game to play. That was one of the ones you were considering. And yeah, it's not very good. It's sort of one of those games that's so old that talking about it kind of has zero relevance to anything related that's, to modern game that's design. Like one of those franchises that Legacy of Cain and Blood Omen and everything get get talked about a lot, and they just haven't made one in a very long time, and so well, it feels really... like. A, yeah, the really popular one was Soul Reaver, I think. The Soul PS1 Reaver, one. yeah. I believe that was like one of the first things Amy Hennig worked on with Crystal Dynamics and stuff. But yeah. um, the, the original, original Legacy of Kane was this kind of dodgy 2D top down hack and slash, like Ultima, but with blood sucking. Yeah. Yeah, that seems like one of those things that if they were to ever go back to that well, they would have to do a remake to like reintroduce yeah. this thing to a modern audience yeah and at that point who would care that much the people who actually have an investment in kane as a character would just go oh you changed it and everyone else would just go who the fuck's this yeah so just uh, just make a new thing about a vampire 
Yeah, it's yeah. like make, remaking chess, isn't it? Like, um, why'd you do this? It was yeah. Fine. yeah. Legacy of Abel. <laughs> the Bible, Bible goof for y'all. Yeah. I remember saying something similar when the, uh, the first person shooter version of Syndicate came out. Oh, I remember that. It was like, it was like well, people who like the original Syndicate will just go, what the fuck's this? And the people who don't will just go, what the fuck's this? So what was the point? Yeah. yeah. Alienating audiences, because that's my kink. Well. Uh, Richard Snook gives 10 British pounds and says, greetings from Hearn Bay, Warrington born. Nobody cares, Richard Snook. Really enjoy all your work. Really want someone to make a game reusing the guerrilla fighting mechanics of Freedom Fighters on the PlayStation 2. Smiley face. Why, oh, jeez. That's a game. Yeah. Freedom Fighters. Was that the one that was like the plot of Red Dawn? Yeah, so. and that yeah. was... Uh... Was that Ken Levine? Nope, that was Iowa oh, Interactive. Never mind. Not Ken uh, Levine. Iowa Interactive. Yeah, the Hitman uh, guys. The did you read the one above that, or did I space out? Yeah, I did. Uh, okay. No, we had a we had a member uh, 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 membership above that. Oh, that's Marty. Oh, okay. uh, that's my thing. But yeah, Freedom Fighters. There's a couple games of that generation. Freedom, Freedom Fighters, uh, Mercenaries, Tools of Destruction. Do you remember that game? The, I believe that was a Lucas Arts game where that had a lot of cool destruction physics, kind of an open world um, sandbox. Not the... Not the Ratchet and Clank game, Tools of Destruction. No, I believe it was just called Mercenaries, <laughs> colon, uh, Tools of Destruction. And, and Oh, was, yeah. yeah. Oh, I played Mercenaries 2. I reviewed it way back in yeah. the day. Oh, no, that would be a thing. Ratchet and Clank. Sly Cooper getting redone. That's just Batman they, Arkham City now. Huh? They did. They mm. remade Ratchet 2016 for the PS4 is a remake of the original game. And they did that to kind of coincide with the movie which ended up being a big bomb but um i've already seen people in the chat talking about both kind of bringing back sly and bringing back jack and daxter and again uh, nah. it kind of feels like at a certain point that far down the road do you need to reintroduce them can you just make a jack four well like, the, do you even want to acknowledge jack three and jack x well, when it got all well, oh. well also the devs of those games probably don't want to go back because the jack and daxter guy is a naughty dog you yeah. can make very <laughs> you make very serious games called The Last of Us now. Yeah. And uh, Sly was uh, Sucker Punch, who made the infamous series. Yeah, and Ghost of Tsushima. Ghost of, Ghost of Tsushima. So, yeah, yeah they're, they're quite happy where they are, thanks. They don't really need to ridge, ridge up the past. Like, what yeah. if I did slap the Sly Cooper signal and they're all just like, oh, the signal, <laughs> we're coming. The thing is, it's French. You need to give it to French devs. No more, uh, yeah. No more, um, no more stolen valor. We need yeah, to like the, the French. The, was it the French, they do nostalgia quite sexy. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, they love nostalgia. Uh, Jackson Jewel, been around for two months. Thank you so much, Jackson. Said, "What about Draken, the Ancient Gates, a PS One classic?" I uh, remember was that the one with was yeah, that the one with the lady main character who rides uh, it rides is a, a lady. dragon. It is a lady. Uh, it is a PS Two game. She rides a dragon by Surreal Software. Which uh, oh, oh, they made was... the suffering. Did you? I played oh. the suffering. Yeah, I'm aware of the suffering. I think I played the dragon game as well. I, I remember it being quite hilarious. You were this lady who had a dragon friend she rode, and the dragon was intelligent and could speak to her and was like the support NPC. And you had a special button to summon your dragon. And mm -hmm. if you did it while you were standing right next to him, he'd get increasingly annoyed. Lady, what the fuck are you calling me? I'm right here. What are you okay. doing? Uh, I'm standing right here, you idiot. <laughs> I, I like that. I like that. Uh, Jackson, for you, I have a copy of The Suffering right here. I'm going to send that out to you. I'm not going to send that to you. I just bought <laughs> my copy of The Suffering on Xbox. Uh, oh, wow, they made the Lord of the Rings game, too. Ooh. Ooh, the first one, The Fellowship of the Ring that didn't have the movie license. Yeah. <laughs> Very long Pom Tom Bombadil second. Pom Tom Bombadil? Tom, Tom Bombadil? Yeah. That's, that's accurate. That's his that actual Tom, Tom Bombadil. Bombadil. Yeah. Hard. It's hard to say his name. Tom to Tom Bombadil. Anyway, Arms and Legs gives five Canadian dollars. Says, I feel Pop 2008, Prince of Persia, should have a redo. The idea of dual fighter combat stroke platforming dynamically switching between characters yet to be fully explored. Yeah, I've been meaning to replay that one as well, because I remember the platforming being good, and I remember mm -hmm. mostly being against it just because it wasn't the sense of time. Uh, although I seem to remember the combat sucking ass. I loved it. You couldn't die. Yeah. This is a plus in my book. Video games are too hard. Uh, and I, I, it was my favorite aesthetic of any of the Prince of Persia games. I love kind of the watercolor art style of the music. I love the 
Uh, I love the the um, the voice acting sucks. Connection between them. It's just because you missed the original. Well, you know, God. getting Nolan North in to play the fucking Prince of Persia. No, thank you. Oh. I don't You're need my Nathan Drake getting in on my hunky prince fantasies. You just want no, don't bring any New Testament into your Old Testament. Yes, quite. No mixing the meats. Uh, Wesley Thomas gives five dollars Canadian and says, "My vote is for Ring of Red, very unique mech combat strategy RPG for the PS2. It had much more focus on action and strategy than anime guff." Ooh, someone's got an axe to grind. That's why it died. Yeah. <laughs> All the anime guff killed my game. Uh-huh. <laughs> Rip. All the anime guff killed my game. Uh, Ring I... of Red. I don't know Ring of Red. Mech no, combat. I've never heard. Of that. I know. Um... What's that game? The weird survival horror thing. Rule of Rose? Rule of that's, Rose, that's, yeah. That's, that was the first thought I had. Then I thought, oh, wait, no. Ring of Red's a different thing. Oh, my God. That's funny. Ring of Red. Okay, so this is cultural thing with Mexico that uh, you get taco shops popping up all the time and they just make random murals of anything. Plagiarism be damned. I was like, I know this one. Yeah, there's a picture of an old uh, taqueria in Mexico with that guy the ring of red box art on their wall just okay why yeah. i don't know it just, <laughs> just has nothing to do with anything it's Ooh. just so random uh, that's that's like cute it. it's like it's like uh ice cream vans in the uk this they were always painted with very slightly off-brand disney characters there you go yeah, yeah no this is yeah just random dude with the tank okay yeah. Wait, i that? appreciate that <laughs> Uh, also, uh, fun fact, did yes. you know Rule of Rose is made by Punchline. They only did two games. First one, Tulip. The kissing game. Crazy. We all love the kissing game. We all love the kissing game. Mikhail Hudon gives five Canadian and says, The last story needs to be off of the Wii and on anything else. It's great narrative and weird Dragon Age Origins adjacent combat were very memorable. I don't think I ever played that one. Mikhail Was- Hudon. Uh, that was uh, Sakaguchi, the creator of Final Fantasy, uh, one, of, one of his Mistwalker games, along with uh, oh. Blue Dragon and Lost Odyssey. He did that. Yeah, it was for the Wii, um, which uh, a lot of Wii games could probably use a, a, a nice refresh on modern consoles. Yeah. Uh, Most you... of them have gotten it, to be honest. But Sure, yeah. yeah. Do they still make Wii Sports? Uh, a, they, yeah, they made a Wii Sports game that came out, I believe, last year. Cool. Yeah. Cool. I don't think they call it Wii Sports anymore. Surely not. I thought they called it Wii Sports. Switch Sports? Uh, I think they maybe called it Switch Sports. Do they still have it where you can box the cunt? I want that. Yeah, you can still box. You can box. You can do tennis. Um, I remember like tearing my arm up that summer. That was a, that was a time. <laughs> you had to get Tommy John surgery. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, beneath 1111 gives 20 Swedish kroner and says, Any remake ideas on games you've made, Yahtzee? Ooh. Hmm. Well, I have occasionally recently given thought to maybe I could just go to uh, that guy who runs What Jedi Games, Dave Gibbons. Yeah. No, Dave Gilbert. Dave Gibbons is someone else. Mm. Yes. Because uh, uh, he's an old adventure game studio luminary, just like I was back in the day. And just saying, hey, do you want to remake the Jizo Mythos? I'll just write the scripts and you just put all your lovely art on it, and then we'll both make some cash. But uh, then I realize I can't be asked. Yeah, I oh know. Remake Hatfall, but first person. That would probably give people motion sickness. Hmm. You should go to Dave Gibbons, though, the artist of uh, The Watchmen. Of watch- yeah, of Watchmen. I, realized, I realized that's what I was saying, yeah. They, go uh, to him and be like, hey, you want to remake this game? And he'd be like, sir, I'm still he- dealing with Alan Moore. Who are you? <laughs> You know why I get confused? Because Dave Gilbert makes Adventure Game Studio adventure, point-and-click adventure games, but Dave and Gibbons also worked on Beneath the Steel Sky, which was a point-and-click adventure game from back in the day. Well, and there's Dave Gilbert and there's Ron Gilbert. Who both make Yes, Ron games. Gilbert is another entirely different a adventure porn game. star? Maker. Different man. No, you're thinking of Ron John. Ron John. <laughs> Ron, Ron At least Jeremy, from Harry Potter. That's his name, Ron, Ron John. Uh, Ron, Ron John Weasley. <laughs> Anyway, uh, Diane Spencer gives 10 British pounds, says, Hi, I'm still alive. Well, well notif- notify the Daily Express, Diana Spencer, because uh, they've been banging on about that for years. <laughs> mm. 
Alex Armstrong gives five dollars and says, "Off topic question, but Yahtzee, whenever you do another semi ramblematic may I put in a suggestion? Were any of the Watch Dogs games actually good? Well, you know what was good about at least one Watch Dogs game: Tell the us. writing of the AI character from the third Watch Dogs game. It was incredible. It was shit. That was a. Too I think that, that was some amazingly well punched up dialogue. I thought they made mm. me cry. Uh, the Piss Bandit gives $10 and says, Philosophically, does Pal World count as a redo of Pokemon? I don't have a dog in the race, but it's been fun taking the piss out of both parties. I, what is it? I always say, like, aside of plagiarism, straight up, always, like, no genre is sacred, so to speak. I saw that with, uh, with Tinykin, right, where people say, it's just Pikmin, but redone. It's like, well, if Nintendo's not going to do it. Yeah, well, they well Nintendo do and do they, it. Nintendo they do put it, out Pikmin but Four. They, you know, they kept the same one. It's like uh, with Tunic, because Nintendo has no interest in making those kind of Zelda games anymore. So it's like Tunic goes, I'll do yeah. it. Yeah, there's it's a difference like in being inspired by something and possibly using rigging and assets. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's yeah. A for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Star Stardew Valley is basically just Harvest Moon as it was on the SNES and Game Boy Advance. And mm -hmm. because the actual developers of Story of Seasons and such like now want to make full-on 3D farming simulators, most people pr would prefer just the nice nostalgic look of Stardew Valley instead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you want to tune in live for Yahtzee's full thoughts on Pal World when he plays it, tune in this Wednesday for Yahtzee Tries, 3 p.m. Central. Yeah, yeah, I haven't played it yet. I'm saving it for Yahtzee Tries. That'll bring the viewers in, I'm sure. <laughs> Uh, old five million copies in three days. That is ludicrous. Five, yeah, clearly, that was 30. Clearly, they've, clearly they've touched some unexpected nerve. Yeah. Did you say 30 million copies? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was 30. No, it was five million copies. Yeah. Was it five? Is absurd. Five, yes. 30 million is nerve. One for every human on earth. Yeah, all 30 million. Of all us. 30 million of us. <laughs> Uh, Rascally Scramp gives $5 and says, Games that deserve a redo? Diddy Kong Racing! Too bad Rare is only allowed to make Sea of Thieves updates now. <laughs> I would love that. Yeah, Diddy Kong Racing was great. It was Mario Kart, but with like a nice little campaign and adventure mode, a little open world, had a, a slightly culturally insensitive elephant. Um, it was great. I should bring that, that one back. That had, that the one that had Conker from Conker's Bad Fur Day in as a character? Yeah, Conker, and it had Banjo. Well, it had Conquer before Conquer went bad. It was back when Conquer okay. was going to be was, a nice little platform. Okay, basket. it was nice Conquer, not yeah. uh, alcoholic Conquer. Oh, I'd kill for like nuts and bolts remade, better tech, so I could get some better snapping well, on you my. You could always uh, go and play uh, The Legend of Zelda: <laughs> Tears of the uh, Kingdom. Uh, yeah. the Kingdom. That's yeah. basically yeah. nuts and bolts. Sure, but there's no like mandatory racing, you know. Sure. That's a good name for a racing game, by the way. Mandatory, Mandatory racing. racing. Yeah. Court ordered racing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jackson Jewel gives two dollars and says, "I meant PS2. Forgive me." Oh, yeah, we I forgive forgot. you. Yeah, I forgot what he was talking about. That was on the game. I already forgot the name of the game, but the one with the dragon and the girl on the cover. Uh, Draken, oh, the Dra ancient Draken. 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 Yeah, yeah. Oh. Draken. There you go. Alex Armstrong gives two dollars and says, "Why not remake Glover? That had a bad release. It was also a bad game." Okay. It was just bad. I don't want to play as a hand. What am I? A hand? <laughs> just a hand and there's a ball? What's going it's on? Out of its time. Yeah. Get the hell out yeah. of here. I have no opinion on Glover. Bad. It's a bad game. Uh, Acia Art gives $5 and says, I'd love a Metal Gear series remake, but Konami hates money and will probably mess it up. What do you mean? You're about oh, to get Snake Eater. Yeah. We'll find They're out. They're literally remaking Snake Eater. Yeah. But they love money. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they just don't understand. They just don't know how to be creative. <laughs> and if they're going to remake the whole series, I guess it makes sense to start with Snake Eater because it's the first one chronologically in the timeline. Go. Yeah. Well, you get to see Snake come out, eat a snake. Is that guy's name? Finally, oh, yeah. yeah, in 4K. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I hope they remake the theme tune. What are they going to do with that ladder scene? They got to make it longer, right? You can't shorten the ladder. Well, make make it a roguelike. The ladder's a roguelike. Like, it's a different length every time. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Niras25 gives 25 rons and says, any of you play the A League of Legends story games? They're pretty good, but they get overlooked because of the lol name. Maybe for a Yahtzee try? Uh, I did try out uh, the Mage Seeker, but you know what turned me off after a while? It's like It felt like it kept referencing stuff I didn't get. It does that a lot. Like, yeah. 
I've um I've played oh, this is probably them. a League of Legends reference. Anyway, I'm bored now. That one was made by the uh, Moonlighter yes, guy. Yes, Moonlighter. Yes, yeah, the Moonlighter yeah. guys. Um, they're interesting. They seem to tackle a different genre with each each game. But yeah, it's very like, hey, look, it's the game, the the big game you yeah. should be playing instead of this one. Yeah, I can respect wanting to try new things. I don't mind it. I think that's what a lot of like big franchise, um, like Smite, I always said, instead of being an an online mo- MOBA, just make separate games with your IP. Yeah. There you go. I'm curious. Uh, uh, let's talk about this on another thing, but I feel like Genshin's going to do that. I feel like in five years we're going to have a lot of different Genshin games that are kind of Genshin offshoots, possibly a different genre than traditional Genshin. Oh no! But what if they're not about my personal favorite waifu? Mm. I will feel they'll very be, underserved. A game for all waifus. They'll do it like Pokemon, you know, like same game, Pokemon. different waifu. Yeah, <laughs> like the Pokemon mini game in uh, Like a Dragon Infinite yeah. Wealth. But, but instead of Pokemon, it's creepy men. Everything I hear about this game is, is this is the most game, apparently. It's every game. It's every game. Okay. Yeah, it's Never mad. made another game. <laughs> uh, Loey Hassler gives 499 US and says, I would like a remake of the GameCube game Kirby Air Ride. Cut out the top down mini races and just add more tracks and city trial maps. Uh, agreed. Kirby Air Ride. That was a, that that was a came one up button in, game. Yeah, that came up in Guess the Game last week and oh, nobody, nice. I okay, didn't know yeah. what the fuck it was. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, N64, the sort of games of that era, N64, GameCube, GBA, GBA that Nintendo left on the table, and I think could revisit. You can get the Chibi Robo, you can get Golden Sun, uh, which just got re-released onto Switch Online, um, Space Station Silicon Valley, which is what the GTA 3 team did before yeah. GTA 3. We, we got to go deeper, you know? Like, give me back Ski Free, but remake it. With a horror technology. game where that where the yeti chases you down the why road? has no one made that an infinite runner with a yeti chasing after you i'm gonna make so much money oh uh Get the guy who made gordon ramsay rush to make it no it, okay. <laughs> uh, you could play uh ski safari that's infinite runner where there's yetis ski safari oh infinite skier you know so many games i just happen to know that one because i know the developers they were mates of mine back in brisbane oh look at that oh, that's nice seven degrees uh, where was I? Alex Armstrong gives five dollars and says, "You know what should get remade with way better graphics and include lore from a very good comedy mystery novel series, The Consuming Shadow." Wink, wink. Oh, you big bum licker! Oh, look no, at that bum! I've talked before that I don't really like going back to ideas, so uh, I've talked about remaking The Consuming Shadow. But if I did, it would be like a whole new setting. I thought like setting yeah. it at sea on no. a boat. It's not bad. Cool. Yeah, some good Sea of Thieves water graphics. Uh, oh, Christ. Not that I'm going to make. <laughs> no, uh, I'm make a studio. Yes. Mark Davis gives 499 British pounds and says, There is now a whole generation who haven't played Soul Reaver. Does it deserve a redo more than Silent Hill 2? Love you guys, XOXOXO. I would say there's more Follow. than a generation. Like, that series has been, it's been like 20 years since that series was notable. Well, you know. I mean, well, I never done. played Soul Reaver, so apparently, yes, maybe I would appreciate a remake to see what all the fuss is about. Yeah. I, uh, you know what? My hot take of the year? Silent Hill 2 remake is going to be good. Ah, bloody hell. It's like Legacy of the, Pain again. That is the most scalding of takes, and you are going to burn yourself quite horribly on it, I fear. I like I'm a wrong. Spicy I'll just deny I ever said it. Then I'm going to oh, erase the tapes, that. so it's fine. Oh. I'm a volume shooter. <laughs> well, I'm going to remind you you said it every week for the rest of the year oh How no about that? Oh, no. uh dan Emita gives five euros and says i want remakes of the jack and daxter trilogy where i can control the camera with the right joystick no other changes required i want the first game and then i want the second game to not be uh influenced by grand theft auto 3 like every game of that era was i want them yeah, to stick yeah. to their laurels and just make cool colorful platformers everything mm. doesn't have to be grand theft auto and gritty unless it's grand theft auto Yes, Grand Theft Auto should be Grand Theft Auto already. Yeah. Uh, Sean Harriman gives two dollars and says, "If only, Co- if only Kotor remake wasn't dead in the water," meaning Knights of the Old Republic, of course. Yeah. Uh, that would be like that's one of those games that people adore, but is a little, a little janky to go back to. That, um, especially given the Star Wars thing, if done right, could uh, could I think really click with the new generation? But they need to find the right studio, and Saber Interactive was not the right studio. Did uh, did Nick well, ever just... play that on stream? 
I don't think so, because I think he said he was waiting for the remake, and then they uh, got canceled. Oh, yeah. damn, he killed my, it. See, my perception of Knights of the Old Republic is that it's just, it was the practice for Mass Effect. <laughs> Sometimes that's all you are, you know? Yeah. Uh, just the, the dude before you, the dude that gets married. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Tragic. Anyway, Fox D gives $5. And says, Frost asked for a new twist on Resident Evil. Med student with Joseph Mengele as his personal hero gets his first job in a hospital. See? Not bad. Not bad. A little Scrubs there action there. I see it. Scrubs? Hospital. Yeah, residents. They're all residents. Abandoned hospitals. Joseph Mengele? Horror setting. Yeah, that's I classic. Be him. Yeah, and a little code I have to find and put into a locker. Oh, yeah. It makes yeah, itself. Okay. Yeah, you know, if you play uh, the adventure game I Have No Mouth and I'm a Scream, you can play as a character who's basically Joseph Mengele with the name changed. Oh, that's all I aspire to do, you know? Joseph Jengler? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It sounds silly when you call that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sounds almost jolly. Hi, I'm Mr. Jingles. Oh, it's, like playing, yeah, it's like the difference between playing in major key and minors. Yeah, exactly. Less ominous. Yeah. Uh, Urban M gives 25 Polish Zloty and says being a huge Tomb Raider fan back in the days I kind of liked what they did with Tomb Raider Anniversary that's how I think games should be remade that wasn't a bad one yeah yeah I, I remember not disliking it yeah and then this month or in February I think we're getting the uh, Tomb Raider trilogy remastered yes. which is taking the first three games and kind of removing some of the, the yeah, early 3D but it's, jank but it's not going to be like the remake style that anniversary was no no which again is very strange for all the different um yeah. all the different words that uh kinds of remakes and reimaginings and and revisitings games can be uh hunter road gives ten dollars says honestly wouldn't mind seeing metroid prime hunters was kind of meh game but i feel like it might be better received on something other than the ds almost feels like that could be a mode in a in metroid prime 4 is a multiplayer mode it's metroid a shame when... hunters <laughs> you still think Metroid Prime 4 is happening? How cute. <laughs> yeah, there's a, it's a shame when good games are for exclusives for handhelds nobody likes anymore. Yeah. Like, remember, Gravi remember Gravity Rush? That was like an exclusive to like PlayStation Vita? Vita for the longest time. Yeah. Sure. That's how I feel about the out. Cranker. Finally got yeah, get our Cranker games. Cranker HD. Cranker 4K. Yeah. Gravity Rush, underrated in my opinion. Yeah. I quite like them. Really strong aesthetic. It reminds, Agreed. It's like it's like a JRPG meets uh, a Jean-Pierre Genet film meets a really weird movement mechanic. Yeah. It's it's quirky, it's fun. Agreed. Unique. I'll ask for. Oh. Um Zoe Heisvelg gives five dollars and says Pokemon Coliseum Stroke XD. The children yearn for unique takes on the IP and genius sonority were ahead of the curve on this one. I believe that was the one where you uh, it's like you you I think you play as the bad guys and you're going around and like uh uh your team rocket or team rocket adjacent. I've heard yeah. so much about Pokemon being remade this weekend. It feels like <laughs> Nintendo's not, or Game Freaks, I guess. They're not the abusive husband, but they're just like, they're no good for nothing, just kind of lays on the couch they're, they're as just, a drink. Yeah, the sort of disengaged husband. Yeah. yeah. None, of the, none of the official Pokemon games have had much of a spark lately. Right. It's like, yeah, dead bedroom type thing. Yeah. Got to watch out because the wifey's going to be making eyes at that hot new pool cleaner. Oh, oh I knew oh, it yeah, should Pokemon, go. We don't have a Coliseum pool. Coliseum is the one that sent Phoenix. Or like Arizona? Pokemon. Yeah, it's like a set a representation <laughs> of Phoenix. I'm so, is that the game that started the Arizona trend? I'm sick of Maybe seeing it is. Arizona games. Maybe it is. the first games. Arizona game. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, crazy. Uh, Camden Ninja gives $5 and says, Dark Horse Candidate, Deus Ex Invisible War. Because it was so dang bare. Deus Ex deserves an actually good sequel. They redo it properly this time. I'm with you, Camden Ninja. I wish uh, we'd get out of the fucking hole of prequels with our franchise and oh. just make more games that... Act upon the promise of the first one. I feel like immersive sim remakes never yeah. do better because I feel like they try to take in modern sensibilities, but that's mm. that's not what you want out of it. So you end up the people who like immersive sims don't like this sensible game, and everyone else is like, "What the hell is this?" Fair enough. I didn't ask for this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Alex Armstrong gives five dollars and says, "Does Sonic 06 really need to be remade? It serves a place in gaming history as a how not to do, and we're fine moving on despite Project 06 existing." So it should be a I'm cautionary with... tale and just like put its head on a pike outside to make sure. Yeah, I guess I'm comfort. also with you on that, Alex Armstrong. I think Sonic 06 has more value as an example as it would ever have as a decent game. Well, America likes a redemption story, you know. Yeah, but everyone immediately lose interest in things when they actually work. Fair, but it was like, what, there for like the if, moment. Like, what if uh, Neil Breen came out and produced an actually competently made film? No one would give a shit. See, you yeah. say that, but that's kind of what's happened with Adam Sandler. You know, like uncut gems or whatever. It's like, oh, he actually tried this time, and it wasn't. Yeah, uh, every every five years he tries, and he gets punched yeah. in the glove. Or, yeah, that's always been the yeah, that's always been the case, isn't it? Like, yeah, the occasional sign of effort. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was like a uh, group that with Nicolas Cage. Nicolas Cage only ever does really good or, and really astonishingly bad. I think there's no in between with that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Good well, movies and bad his... movies both, both have the same paychecks. So. He, wow, he won his Oscar pretty early. I figured he doesn't care no more. Good. He already left Las Vegas. Just yeah, dinosaur sorry. bones, that's all he wants. <laughs> sorry, Nicolas Coppola. Perhaps we should say. That's right. Ah, yeah. in Nepo, Nepo baby. Nepo baby. Nepo baby. <laughs> he changed his name. That's not a Nepo baby, though. Isn't that like wanting to make yeah, it on your own? Well, yeah, but everyone still knows that he's the nephew of Francis Ford Coppola. Yeah. I mean, this is true. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Eric Weichart. Oh, <laughs> Eric. Hi, Eric. What are you doing here? <laughs> Gives 20 asses and says, we need a full, we need a full cover of Mighty Poop now. That could be that could be a, a Patreon a lot. fifty dollars yeah, Patreon. Is nigh tell tell you what, we'll rework the lyrics and make it the next Adventure is Nigh song. Can we Incredible. do that? Oh, there you go. Can we do that? There's I, no cops. I am the great mighty oob. <laughs> That's good. That's right good. Yeah. That that'll bring him in. It's distinct enough, yeah. Uh, Bannon gives five dollars and says they should do a remake of Bomberman, but gritty and a more machine apocalypse feel. I'm sure that will be a big hit. <laughs> oh, he's referencing a thing they actually tried to do. We got a Bomberman game for you. There was a gritty Bomberman game and it was really bad. Oh. His dead wife was his bomb. Is it really? No, that was the. <laughs> that was, yeah, yeah. It was made by Christopher, Christopper Nolan. Yeah. <laughs> Christopher Nolan. It's Christopher Nolan. Okay, Titan Uranus gives four ninety nine dollars and says, Modders have been redoing flawed games for a while now, specifically thinking of P06 that claims to make Sonic 06 allegedly decent. Oh, Titan welcome. Titan Uranus. Welcome to an hour ago, Titan Uranus. Oh, Titan. You know what? We appreciate your tightening anus, though. So, I think his uh, anus was a little bit loose that with that super chat. <laughs> Need to do kegels, my boy. Doesn't yeah, need to looser, play games on the toilet. Looser than we'd expect from you. <laughs> A Bannon comes back with $5 and says, okay, but actually I'd like to see Fallout 1 and 2 updated, or maybe done well in the Bethesda style. Surprised there hasn't been like a fan-made mod for Fallout 3 that just turns, in, turns Fallout 1 into Fallout 3. Yeah. Is that not, um, what's that, that dragon thing? Far Cry what? 3, the, the, the retro. Blood dragon? Oh, Blood yeah, Dragon. Yeah, Blood Dragon, yeah. Is that not what that was? Not really. No. Mm. Wait, what do you mean? Still got to play it. I oh, okay. was, yeah, no, people so were saying... Change, like, uh, that didn't change the POV or anything. It was just no, I, 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 I did Far Cry on. 3, and people were like, oh, you should do Blood Dragon. And I was my friend who was a big fan of Far Cry. He's like, yeah, it feels like they tried to fix 1 and 2 and threw it into Blood Dragon. It's like, no, oh, that's hmm. not really what Blood Dragon is. Hmm. Blood Dragon's just a, like a joke. Yeah, I was yeah. like, is this a joke game? What is happening? Yeah. I'm not sure. It's like a, that Red Dead zombie redemption. Yeah, like, yeah. I think it's, I it's definitely more game? on the... Yeah, yeah it's yeah. more on the, the side of that, I would say. Okay. Uh, Tsunami Dusha gives $20 and says, Bomberman 64 could benefit from a redo. Bombs used as a main utility for platforming function as much as a weapon that kill yourself in one misplacement. Game was never remade and no spiritual successes. I like the 3D Bomberman kind of platformy games. I like Bomberman 64, Bomberman Heroes, Bomberman Generations. Not the not the realistic ones. I guess they've like milked as much as they possibly could out of the whole Bomberman concept. The core, just, like top-down little maze yeah. thing. Yeah, he's yeah. a dude who puts bombs in things. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Alex Armstrong is two dollars and says, "Marty, can I buy that Majora's mask off you, please?" 
Uh, Nick, a uh, uh, friend of the shows, Nick the OG in the chats, uh, actually made that for me. Um, it's it's oh. made of bead. It's one of those bead things where it's like a million little beads. Oh, the crystal things. Yeah, little but little he does things. like he does those just sort of like was vibing out while watching videos and stuff. So maybe maybe contact him. I don't know if he does uh, commissions. There you go. But, yeah. Well, that was nice of him. Yeah, I think I also bought a bunch of his amiibo, and I got addicted to amiibo. So I think he felt bad that uh, he like caused me to become addicted to a thing. That has financially ruined me. So, um, what a nice yeah. dealer. Yeah. Uh, John Connor gives two dollars Canadian and says remake of Starfield could use some substance. You know, um, I used to think maybe there should be some kind of legal limit as to how much time would need to pass before you could remake something. So I feel. I remember Mariana. thinking that when Mirror's Edge Catalyst was coming out. But apparently, if you can like put out the remaster of Last of Us Two, it's. Uh, it's any anything goes, I suppose. Mm -hmm. At least the remake immediately after the normal release. You get yes. that with some uh, foreign <laughs> foreign movies, like they're working on a uh, English version of Parasite. Oh, that movie just came out. The well, Departed just... was an American remake of uh, of a uh, Japanese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Movie. And The Grudge, and then The Ring. And the then... Ring, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. They Rick remade Houses. a bunch of Japanese classic horror films mm -hmm. in, um, in American. Yeah. What was that game? I'm surprised we've made it this far without them mentioning it. Freelancer? Oh, yes. Wing Commander Freelancer. Uh, Chris, Chris Roberts? I believe so. That's yeah. all I heard through Starfield. It's like it should have been Freelancer, not this yeah. game. Yeah. Or Star Control 2. That's another mm -hmm. good one from back mm -hmm. in the day. Uh... Humane Shield gives 4 99 and says, Remake of Commodore 64, Caveman Olympics, and Spy vs. Spy. Red Dwarf Pop Quiz, what food was Lister going to eat last in the episode Marooned? Okay, in Marooned, the only food they had was half a bag of soggy smoky bacon crisps, a tin of mustard powder, a brown lemon, three bottles of vinegar, uh, and a tube of Bongella gum ointment. And the only th other Crisp things they the found thing. after... And the only other things they found after that was a pot noodle and a tin of dog food. And uh, Lister vowed that the last thing he would eat was the pot noodle, because he can't stand pot noodles. That was the joke. Because you were thinking he was going to say the dog food, but he actually said the pot uh, noodle. I was thinking more like, save the best for last, so I don't know. I guess it's just, which one would I not eat? All right. It happened. Mm. Never seen Red Dwarf. No. It's one of those shows Yahtzee makes up every time he makes up all these fucking. Yeah, teams. I keep oh, thinking of uh, what was it uh, with Chris Hemsworth and Josh Peck. I think I keep thinking of Red Rocket, the boners that dogs get. Oh well, the wandering minds and all that. Anyway, yes. And... yes, Red Dwarf is something I've made up. It was a hell of a lot of effort making all those clips on YouTube. I tell you that. <laughs> Uh, Goo Bomber gives five dollars and says, "Missed the stream. Did the gang go over POC? Yes. No, we haven't. <laughs> we haven't got over it. Got another twenty. Not yeah. even gonna re read the rest of that. He was asking <laughs> if we were talking about the Sonic 06 remake. That made it actually playable slash good. Yeah, give her a go. Give her a go. And it, it's it's Red Dawn. I keep confusing with Red Dwarf. Oh, and... Red Dawn. Oh, yeah. yeah, Wolverines. You should play Sonic PO6 some some slow week for Yahtzee tries." I'm just saying. Well, I ain't going to do that, but fine. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Lance White gives 200 asses and says, did Chrono Trigger get mentioned already? No. What's yes, wrong with Chrono Trigger you think needs remaking? I don't think it needs. I think there's a lot of Square games that could use a once-over. I feel like Chrono Trigger is like, like a Too visually. And, yeah, it's like a perfect. The Super Nintendo, I think the, the, the visuals from that generation age very well, in my opinion, and a lot of the mechanics. Same thing. So I feel like some of their PS1 games could definitely use a little spruce up. How do you feel about Chrono Cross in comparison to Chrono Trigger? Uh, in, it, uh, not nearly as good, but uh, when we talk about big swings for the fence, it is one of those big swings for the fence. That, oh, yeah. Uh, is, connects is that in a lot game, of ways. But... Is that the game with like 200 fucking party members? It's like, I think uh, almost oh. 50. Yeah. And some of them yeah. are like weird voodoo dolls and weird little aliens. There's literally just like a little alien. Um, Strange yeah. game, but uh, that more like yeah. a it's more like Pokemon than a Japanese RPG. Yeah, at, at a certain point when you get that many characters, yeah. Um, but I, 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 I'd like to see them like a Parasite Eve, which was a New York set sort of horror uh, RPG for the PS1 uh, that takes place around Christmas. I'd like to see that. 
Give that one a remake. Give that one the old college try. Uh, Miss Harmony gives one ninety nine and says Robo Warrior NES remake it. So underrated. I don't think I know Robo Warrior. Certainly yes. wasn't a very memorable title. That's no. Armored Core. It's a remake. It's just cool. Armored Core. We just make Armored Core. The cover is fucking sick. It's what, a Jellico what, game. What is it with the Japanese and giant mechs? I they love it. Yeah, they love it's it. It's a feat of engineering. You'd show it off. Uh, yeah, but it's not more practical than a big car. Yeah, it's not about practicality. Well, you know, what if you need to step over something? Your car can't step over things. Well, I feel whatever advantage you gain is lost in the fact that you it takes like decades of research just to be able to get the thing to stand up by itself. Exactly, it's fashion over function. But I'm sure one mech would just completely obliterate all of Japan's resources. Yeah. Well, why don't you just use all those to make, like, a million tanks and train a million soldiers? Yeah. Or just make better waifus. Fashion over function. Not war. You want to look sick as hell. <laughs> I love it when you look at something like Pacific Rim or a lot of anime stuff where they... The sheer tortured effort that goes into justifying giant robots as a concept... I mean, oh, really, it's the only thing that makes sense in this to, to, fight, to fight this specific foe. It was Pacific Rim kind of just said, fuck it. <laughs> the only excuse is we tried the wall. <laughs> now let's, let's tried the wall, it didn't work, so this is what we're going to do next. We've, we've tried yeah. nothing, and we're, yeah. we're good with it. Yeah. Uh, Titan Uranus comes back with uh, $10 from his anus and says, I would love to see a new game that takes influence from Dark Cloud 2 stroke Dark Chronicle, if not necessarily a redo. Really interesting uses of photography, inventing, town building, and time travel. Okay. Yeah. That sounds like Dark Beyond Good and Evil, actually, now you mention it. Yeah, Dark Cloud 2 had, uh, that had a lot of uh, elements that are, are pretty big nowadays. The, the crafting, the town building, resource gathering, um, yeah, the photography. Yeah, it is. Uh, uh, Beyond Good and Evil. That's, that's interesting. They share a lot in common, I would say, around the same time as well. Hmm. Uh, Templar Warden gives five New Zealand dollars and says, lots of fan stroke indie follow-ups to Spore still trying to exist. A remake might just work for firming up all the floppy parts and updating the editor. The floppy parts. The floppy parts. Is that too much of an everything game? I'd say so, yeah. A little bit yeah. too ambitious. And in the, at the end of the day, it would just boil down to a sequence of mini-games. Yeah, uh, rather than the actual vision, whatever the fuck that was. How many, how many games before it's just WarioWare? If you want a game that's where you start off in a very small and lowly position and build yourself up to something extravagant and wild, Katamari Damacy's right there and yeah. captures it much better than Spore does. Yeah, hmm. and you can play it in nice, nice small chunks. Yeah, start up like hoovering up paper clips and bits of dust, and by the end of it. You're hoovering up entire nations and planets. The cosmos. That's Donut County. It is, yeah. Yeah, Donut County is a ripoff of Katamari Damacy. Thanks for playing. Not, wow. Not rip off and inspired and inspiration. All right. All right. A extremely inferior game inspired by Katamari Damacy. It's fine. He gets neon white after the fact. That's true. Uh, Sean Cameron gives five dollars and says. Oh, actually, I just thought of a bit of trivia. Donut County, d developer, Neon White. Same. Ben That's what I just said. Yeah. That's what Ross just said. <laughs> what, what I just said. Oh, hey, Ross, he didn't think about it at all. Ross literally just said that. Uh, oh, sorry. I wasn't, I wasn't listening because I was suddenly planning uh, things ahead in my brain. It's just grinding. I've made the connection. Yeah, I said, uh, what is it? It's fine because Ben Esposito gets Neon White in the end. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, you should try to make your voice less soporific then. I completely zoned that, out. That'll do it. I, I do have that, don't I? It's just a certain wave where it's like... Uh... Anyway, where was I? <laughs> Sean Cameron. Uh, Sean Cameron, yes, gives $5. Dollars, says, I would love to see a remake of Legend of Dragoon on the PS1. Also love everything you do. Keep up the good work. Yeah. Your so, time um, shine, Frost. Your favorite game of all time. Sea of Stars almost had that in the, in the tactile nature of it during the fights it just didn't have the random encounters and the story was a bit too linear but it was close enough just give it back just give it back to me 
Legend of Dragoon, famously, Sony first party uh, JRPG wanting to, to sort of capitalize and follow up the success of Final Fantasy VII. And their whole thing was them being like, this is going to be the Final Fantasy VII killer. This is going to put Final Fantasy VII to shame. And it's like, you guys are making money off Final Fantasy VII. Like, just shut up. <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, you have no competition to this. Like, why are you trying to like, why are you trying to one up the thing you already technically own? Well, you're looking at it from a business perspective. And looking from yes. the creative perspective, then you don't want, you know, you don't want to peak too early. Sure. Well, I mean, even from business, if you own both of them, you still succeed. If you there own you the go. competition. No matter who wins, we lose. DVP. <laughs> uh, CSI Freak gives 9.99 British pounds. Says, I doubt this will ever happen, but I'd like to see the PS1 versions of Harry Potter 1 and 2 updated with better graphics. Also, HBD to my son Ollie, 25 today, and he spent the day playing God of War Ragnarok for me. Oh, oh that's nice. A, HBD interesting Ollie. Happy birthday. Yeah. You have. I would HBD do that. I like, I've seen God of War Ragnarok, uh, your review where you were saying you were, you know, had uh, the abject horror of like, oh God, the game's still going. <clears throat> I was like, if yeah. I had a son, I'd watch them play this game. I wouldn't play it myself. I want okay. to be able to rent a son just to have them play the games I don't want to play. I don't want to That's play Pal World, but I need my yeah. son to play Pal World. And, and you'll say, just watch a playthrough, but it's not the same. Anyway. No. Well, good luck explaining that to your son when they're like 18 and ask what motivated you to have children. Playthroughs. <laughs> they get out of, they fall out of love with games. I'm like, well, I got to take you back. I wanted somebody to play yeah. Death Stranding that wasn't me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay, Matthew C. Snow, who's 499, says the KOTOR series could attract a lot of new people if they update the old CRPG mechanics, so the remake is totally still coming out. Crying face emoji. Aww. Maybe someday. Too much money on the table, they'll leave it forever. And then Dies Vault gives $2 and says Morrowind should get a remake, but not by Bethesda. I'm sure someone's working on it. I agree. Um, you you some make mad, it. Some yeah. mad fan developer somewhere. I think there was some scuttlebutt that Oblivion was actually getting an official remake. I don't know if that was real or not. I think I, heard that, I don't I heard trust anything was, from Oblivion. I heard right someone now. was making a fan made version of Oblivion in Skyrim. Sky Oblivion, it was called. Sky Oblivion. Um, uh, before Power World took over Twitter, it was nothing but uh, no game will reach the peaks of Oblivion. In a bunch I saw of that. Like, the humor, yeah. the unintentional humor of Oblivion. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Oh, I don't think you could get that back with a remaster. No. Oh. Uh, the Piss Bandit gives five dollars and says, "Frost, what are the wackiest, most unexpected Takiria wall art that you've seen?" I've seen I've seen a bunch of random ones. I, I think I'm immune to them. One one of my favorites was uh, a portrait of Jesus with tacos, but it wasn't Jesus. It was Obi Wan from uh, uh, <laughs> Attack of the Clones, I believe, when he has longer hair. It was very much Obi Wan. And then this other one was Hulk fist down, two double fisting jarritos, just like Beautiful. okay, Spider Man yeah. stealing tacos from Sailor Moon. That was a random one. It's uh, yeah, uh -huh. art. <laughs> Sounds like one of those videos you get on YouTube if you just watch kids' videos and leave the autoplay on. Yeah, yeah. or you if you of. take uh, Nyquil and Day uh, drink a bottle of Nyquil and Dayquil simultaneously. Yeah, and some you more have, chata. You have visions just, of that. Yeah, they just cancel each other out, wouldn't they? No, you yeah, robo trip. You think, oh, yeah. Uh, Liam Omega gives five dollars and says, seventh gen wise, Alpha Protocol would be a good idea. Otherwise, games from the three hundred and sixty stroke PS three era should just stick to ports. Alpha Protocol, eh? Uh, I suppose it would be nice to remake that with a customizable protagonist who's not a huge <clears throat> git. Because the thing with that game was there was a bunch of different like personas you could adopt uh, when you were like interrogating people, but all of them were just a dick. Yeah. Different flavors of a dick. Neapolitan dick. That yeah, was the game says... I thought I got confused last week. I, I was getting that confused with Shadow Complex last week. <laughs> yes, yes. Mm. Uh, Alex know. Armstrong gives side dollars and says, if Ubisoft are still doing the, that Sand of Time remake, do you hope the combat and visuals see improvement and very little else, or do you not care anymore? I think that's a pretty big if. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm not that bothered. Does When was the last time I played Sands of Time? Does it still hold up to play? Oh, I haven't played that in ages. That was uh, Nick who played that. That's right. Yeah, yeah. just be curious. Uh, I I've, think, I've played I it last year. The platforming. Platforming would still hold up pretty well, I think. It's not bad. Yeah. Still yeah, has character. 
Uh, Ryan Betts gives ten dollars and says, "Gents, I have to miss today, but I wanted to show support and say hello to my future podcast listening self. Yes, please take the piss out of me. Marty, please defend me. Frost, please pick a side." Uh, Ryan Betts, your last name is one letter away from Butts, so I'm going to call you Hairy Butts. Oh, uh, Ryan, I I bet that all your friends and family uh, really uh, loves you and appreciates you. I think I'll, I'll go. I'll go with Yahtzee on that one. <laughs> I feel like yes. it was a little reflexive. <laughs> I, I take my victories where I can. Mm. Uh, Richard Snook comes back with five British pounds and says, "Sorry for the first part of last message. Bit pointless. Hope this makes up for it." Which one of your novels would you make a video game set in? You should I've do it. Make a game of, of Mog World. The oh, Shining. That's already a game that would sort of like, destroy the gag. <clears throat> I would make an open world sandbox based on jam with like a central mechanic where you have to avoid touching the floor. I think that would be interesting. That's a uh, kick bastards, I think. Yeah, something like that. You should make a basketball version of jam. <laughs> and call it what? NBA jam. <laughs> yeah, I saw, yeah, I figured that was where you were going with that. Oh, we could have done space jam as well. A couple of jams. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, Liam Omega gives five dollars and says, "Can I have Yahtzee say something mean? Marty say something nice, and Frost say something random, please and thank you." Uh, Wait, Liam Omega, am I stuck in a time loop? Did we not just do this one? <laughs> no, this is a new one. This is oh. a new, different one. Liam Omega, your name has got the word "mom" in the middle of it, and I'm going to take that to mean you have incestuous thoughts. Eat your uh, heart out, Freud. <laughs> Liam, you're not the alpha; you're the omega, the end of all things. Welcome. Uh, Liam, don't you find it weird how we bake cookies and cook bakies? <laughs> what? Bake, eh? I like it. I love it. Let's drive on parkways and park on driveways. That's great. Mm-hmm. Quinn Thompson gives two Canadian dollars and says, how about a Space Quest remake? Well, there was a remake of the first Space Quest game. They remade the original AGI version in VGA. I remember that confusing me when I was a kid because there was a Space Quest 1 on the shelf and a Space Quest 2 on the shelf and Space Quest 2 for some reason looked a hell of a lot worse. AGI, VGA, what? What were those letters? VGA, EGA, AGI, SCI. These all made sense back in the day. No. no. Robo tripping. Yeah, modernized. Mm. Uh, Mappy1964 gives $5 and says the games I want remade are being done Tomb Raider 1, 2 and 3 now Lara can have curves instead of points oh, she's had so curves that. since Tomb Raider 2 I miss the points in the first one excited. the peripherals are extremely excited uh, a superb owner also I've been member for two months thank you so much superb owner today I learned that not only is Hayao Miyazaki a boobs guy but his voice sounds exactly like Frost's what a great gag that was hmm. what a sicko I like that your name is Super Boner. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Grey Fade gives $2 and says, A friend and I have been talking about Oni Remake. Oh, I know that. That's that weeb game that Bungie made before they made Halo. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, I don't... They should do it, yeah, know. just like from software. Like, hey, this is the mech game we used to make before the yeah. thing you know us for. They're kind hey, of doing I that used... with Marathon, right? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Uh, that's not going to make it. Go back to Weebery. Yeah. yeah, no one cares about your attraction shooter. Make a weeb thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Lampy gives five pounds and says, what if they remade Mega Man 1, but in the style of the US box art? I think that's a great idea. I love that. Yeah, yeah the interesting art piece. It'd probably Absolutely. look a bit like Braid. Yeah. <laughs> With all the weird faces on everything. Yeah. Uh, Easter Calden gives 199 British pounds and says nothing. Thank you, Easter. Uh, Alex Armstrong gives two dollars and says, "You know what console needs a remake? Virtual Boy." Yeah, so give everyone <laughs> headaches. Stare into the sun for an hour. Well, maybe they could make a version of it that doesn't have to be perpetually propped up on the table. And isn't just so, yeah. red. It doesn't just look like a yeah. vision of hell. Looks with more colors. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Goo Bomber gives five dollars and says, "Honestly, most three D Sonic games have potential, which could be realized by a remake that cuts out the jank." One PO6 dev is remaking Heroes right now. Why is Aren't that Marty? Remakes? I don't want to be a hater. Why is, hold any... on. Do you see that? Why is what that is... Marty and Sonic? Because oh, Sonic wants I'm kissing, to kiss Marty. Kiss... Yeah, and I'm so taken aback that my glasses are falling off. Oh, my. Yeah. Marty's oh, Eric, how long did you spend on that Photoshop? Big, wet one on there. <laughs> how long did you spend on that Photoshop? 
uh, our fan remakes. I, I don't want to take power away from the people, but our fan re- are there any like amazing fan remakes? Like, oh, you've just a, you've just I done think... it. He's gonna say the thing now. All the amazing fan remakes just uh, become their own thing if they're good enough. Like uh, the guy who's making Sonic fan games made moved on to making the Spark the Electric Jester games. Yeah, I guess that's true. And yeah. uh, there was that other the Forgotten like, Forbidden City. Forgotten City. Forgot a for, for, Forbidden Planet? No. For no. Forgotten what I City, of? I think. Right. The the, oh, yeah. the sort of the time travel mystery, time loop mystery. No, yeah, yeah, that one as well started out as a Skyrim mm-hmm. mod. Freedom yeah. Planet. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah, yes, Freedom Revolution. Planet, a, very clearly a Sonic fan game before they made it a uh, very slightly different IP. There you go. Blum, 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 Dicky gives five dollars and says, came in late. Was Dark Void mentioned? Because that should be remade. The only thing I remember about that game is you, you, you walk up walls. You walk up walls and I think you had a yeah. shuriken. No, or was that the shuriken? That was Dark Sector. Dark Sector, yeah. Yeah. Dark Void was the one where you had a jetpack. Oh, this is not yeah. the ninja game um, I thought it was. Yeah. yeah, and I liked it because I liked the how you could switch from third person on the ground combat to flight sim, jetpack combat with a single button press. And I thought mm-hmm. that more should have been done with that. Agreed. Uh, Michael Warden gives five British pounds and says, Eric is such a good producer, providing and editing the clips that flow with your conversation. I, I, I know, he's on the ball. Oh, was some naughty pictures in there too, every now and again. There's a couple of little quick shots of pornos, like in Fight Club. Yeah, we should like try to troll him one of these days. Say, oh, you know what my favorite game is? A Secret of Monkey Island. Oh, no, wait, not that. Uh, uh, Half Life. <laughs> Half Life. That's, yes, Half Life. That's pretty Half-Life good. No, wait, Alex no, wait I decided. Yes, Half Life Alex specifically. No, wait, that wasn't what I was thinking yeah. of at all. I actually wanted to talk about um, Ready for Rumble boxing. Yeah. But it was actually Parappa the whole time. Yeah, I see he's not rising to the bait. No. Oh, there you go. <laughs> ah, clever. <laughs> touche, Eric, touche. Clever. Uh, Mel Surigan gives five US dollars and says, also, Einhandia. That game needs even more love. An HD Einhandia would kick butt. That was, uh, that was Square Enix's uh, uh, weird uh, sh- like side-scrolling uh, uh, shmup. Shoot em up. Kind of like, oh, yeah. uh, like R-Type. Of Wait, the like, generation. Like Cuphead, you mean? Yeah, but more like a, you weren't like a character; you were like a, a aircraft. Ah, okay. Yeah. Huh. Uh, Potato Hermit gives 125 PHP Filipino pesos, I think. Still holding out for a Brave Fencer Musashi from the PS1 remake, or at least a re-release after all these years. Poor game, dwarfed by giants on release. Yeah, it, had, it came uh, with demos too, which was the important thing. I have never played that. Uh, so. Uh, if you want more of that, you can have a go at On Guard. Came out last year, this year. Oh yeah, that was a good game. Mm-hmm. No, Bra- sure. it was called Brave Friends or Mushashi, but you weren't a fencer. You were just like a little, like a little samurai dude. Oh. It was a lie. It was. It was just. Right. It just lied, and you stole enemy abilities. But it was nice. Did I wanted to go stole? find it, and I didn't know where my copy. Someone you stole like me, selling uh, illegal stuff, or you fencing goods? What? Why was it a fencer? You no, fences. he's like. Uh, he's just. He was just kind of like a, a wandering Ronin. More than anything. Uh, Tom Sawyer. So he, he fought yeah. with swords, though. He did fight he did. with swords, Correct. yeah. Which is but like a, yeah, but like it was the combat wasn't oh. on party. I would say. So I learned something okay. new. Fencing does not require foils or epes. Mm, cool. So if there's one word the New York Times crossword falls back on way too often, it's epe. Uh, uh, oh, a repas? good vowels, you know. Yeah. Uh, Zoe Reisvelg. Gives five dollars, and says, "Speaking of mecha games from the GCN era that need a remake, we haven't had a custom Robo game since the DS." What's going on? Nintendo, get your shit together. Give us the custom Robos. Yeah. Give us the Chibi Robos. Give us Skies of Arcadia Legends. That's more on Sega's boat, but and all of give those. it to us. Uh, Jay Smasher gives five dollars and says, "Yahtzee, how do you feel about the censoring of your last fully ramblematic with removal of the tit?" Was there a tit removed from the last fully ramblematic? I don't remember <laughs> that at all. Who dares? Aren't I mean, if there was like, a, those? like yeah, if there was a, if there was a naked female breast and there was like it was edited out, that would be because of me because I wouldn't have put an actual naked female breast visible. Oh. Because it's not like we're st- we're not sticking it to the man anymore. We are uh, sticking it to ourselves. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, what, like, what are you doing? Like, a tit that early? <laughs> yes, Super Bowl is the only time you get a tit. Yeah, 
Yeah, you get one tit, and it's a few weekends from now during the Super Bowl, so make yep. it count. One tit for a special treat. Ah, tit. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Rafael Waisoki gives a 10 Polish lottery and says, half of the PSX games. Well, you'll be busy games. then, Rafael Waisoki. Yeah, a lot of games that serve a remake. Give me Final Fantasy Tactics. Modernize that a little bit. Ooh, doggy. Okay. The end's in sight, don't worry. David Fletcher gives $10. And says, here's some money. Thank you, David Fletcher. David, thank you so much. And then Alex Armstrong comes back with another $5 and says, you know what would be cool? Doom fans remaking the original Doom games with modern graphics. It's possible, Ooh. considering how insane they are making mods. Waiting for the game that comes out of Doom that like takes the world by storm, kind of like League of Legends yeah. and World of Warcraft. See, the problem with remaking the original Doom is that the environments aren't really supposed to be actual places where yeah. that actually function as a real life place. And again, I mean, it the was, limitations it took, of your control are kind of. It wasn't like, until like, Duke Nukem 3D that they started basing environments on actual places. Yeah. 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 Or you had to In find Doom, very just, structured, straight places like an IKEA. Yeah. Doom and Quake are just, uh, you know, random labyrinths. Yeah. Uh, Andrew Shug gives five Australian dollars, says, I want Deus Ex 2000 remade in such a way that playing it gives me the same amazing feeling of discovery and wonderment that I felt 24 years ago. Maybe uh, you well, just want say, to be younger. <laughs> as they say, shit into one hand, wish into the other, and see which one fills up first. Waka waka. Who, who says that? I think that's I a, got that's it a thing. Me. Is I it? Yeah. I, wow. Well, I first heard it in a Neil Gaiman book. That sounds like a Neil Gaiman saying, yeah. Yes. Mm. Um, ah, ah gives five dollars and says for the spiritual fourth member of the podcast, Eric Weichart. Oh, well done. There you go. He's finally earning his keep. <laughs> Did it for all those for all those photoshops of me making love to a hedgehog. We were making beneath love. To a hedgehog. I don't know if you saw that. Beneath one, 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 one. Comes back with 20 Swedish Chrono and says, the game Thief 4 should probably need a remake. No, it should be sealed in concrete and dumped in the North Sea. What a what place to put that the game. 4. My God. The 4. That's I don't think anyone yeah. liked that game, did they? Um, well, maybe the people working on it did. I don't know. I didn't. No, it's like it, Michael Caine. I didn't see the movie. Saw the house it built. Yeah. Uh, Hairy Sun 94 gives five Australian dollars and says, Remember Me, the game everyone ironically forgot all about, had some genuinely interesting mechanics that perhaps could be reworked in a better remake. I remember saying as much. Hairy Sun 94 when I reviewed it. It's by Don't Nod, who will go on to for find success with the Life is Strange series, of course. Yeah, and Jassant. But Remember Me had an oh. uh, interesting mechanic where you got to like equip different moves into your combos, which was something that was really clever when Godhand did it. Mm -hmm. And I wondered why no one else has done it since. What do you mean, equip different moves? Well, you've got like four slots for your combo, like square, 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 square. That's right. And uh, you've got like different moves. Like you've got one kind of punch, you've got one kind of kick, yeah. you've got a different kind of punch, you've got like a throw, and you just equip them into those slots. And then uh, yeah. if you press square, 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 it'll do all the moves you equipped in that sequence. Oh, it's like Transistor. Yeah. You kind of like create, yeah, a little bit like Transistor, actually. Um, that'd be cool. Yeah. Right. Also, yeah. God Hand, just, just remake God Hand. Uh, Smysk Audio gives $5 and says, Smysk Audio gives $5 to say, Smysk Audio gives $5 to say. Oh, you witty fellow, Smysk Classic Audio. Smysk. <laughs> Yes, yes, it's true. I'm fairly utilitarian when it comes to reading out super chats. But, you know, I call it being efficient. There you go. Uh, Lampy gives five British pounds and says, How about a Zone of the Enders remake that doesn't crash all the time? Also, great job on the Photoshop of that picture, Eric. Yeah, that, even the, the HD collection crashes all the time. Crash on me while streaming it. I wasn't because happy. They wanted you to, you know, keep that feeling from the original. <laughs> so exactly, we're exactly. Include the crashing. Like, I want a remake of Skyrim on release day, <laughs> where, it, where it just worked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was what was Zone of the Enders game wise? Was it just uh, a it was, game? 
Yeah, yeah, but like real quick combat kind of um, almost right. felt at certain times like a 3D, like a character brawler, um, but with some Kojima weirdness to it. Your your yeah. pod in your Jehudi went into its penis, so it was just and kind you, of a shooting what? penis pod. Ooh, oh, your robot is called the Jehudi. Jehudi. Jehudi yeah. and the Blowfish. Ah! Shouts to Hootie and the Blowfish. Friends of the pod. Uh, Michael Warden gives two British pounds and says, I wished for shit in my hand. Well, oh, congratulations no, on exploiting the loophole. <laughs> in that it's like asking a genie for a thousand for a million wishes. You just yeah. ask for more you just wish for more genies. That's the yeah. that's the loop there. I think the genies are wise to that these days. Hmm. Anyway. Thanks for listening to the Windbreaker Podcast. That's all the super chats. They're all gone. They will that was never a beefy be one. anymore. It's mm-hmm. almost tomorrow and we're still here. I know, crazy that. Uh, I was Yancy Croshaw, presumably still am, and I was joined by Marty Lever and Sebastian Ruiz. That's us. Uh, tune in later this week, because I've got another fully ramblematic on Wednesday, as always. It's going to be on the subject of Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, since we already gave that away. And then I'll be playing Power World in Yancy Tries. Gosh, everything's very well planned ahead this week, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And I've also got a new semi ramblematic dropping on Thursday, and there's Adventures Nigh on Saturday. So that's all my stuff. Lovely. Frost, what do you got? What, what do you got cooking in the chambers? Oh, yeah, say, yeah. Go watch the uh, cold take. Well, I've done a review thing on Hades and uh, use that to keep your mind open because I'm going to do one of those for Power World, which will be next Monday. And then. Uh, after that, I'll go, I'll go back to some some cold thoughts instead of uh, on, on games because I've been doing a bit of a thinking. Uh, that was a weird weekend that I had. Jesus Christ. And then as far as streams are going to go, I believe I'll be shooting the shit with Nick this Thursday. When When is the official day for that? Yep, Thursday, 3 p.m. Central. Thursday's cool. Better with friends on Saturday with uh, Will. That's going to be the pizza possum. And then on Sunday, going to be hanging out with Amy for newly released. All righty. Go. What you got, Marty? I like that yeah, all of our uh, normal streams, Hidden Gems later tonight, uh, 6 p.m. Central. Casey, Jesse, and Jess playing a game called Mortal Sin. Two words that have never been used in the title of video games before. Don't look it up. Uh, and then normal streams, awesome. Editor's Backlog tomorrow, Yahtzee Tries and Firelink on uh, Wednesday, uh, Hell Let Loose, Shoot the Shit, and Devil May Cry 3 on Thursday. Did you ever play Devil May Cry 3, Yachts? It's a good game. Um, I believe so. Yeah, very Not good very, game. Didn't play it all the way through, though. Very good game. And uh, Friday, we're waiting on, uh, waiting on confirmation, but we may have a sponsored stream at Noon Central that might feature not only the return of Jack Packard, but the return of Darren Mooney on a stream. A oh. video game stream. What? Mm, stay tuned for that. Whoa. Stay tuned for that. Uh, two last Super Chats came in while we were to say and all that. Lampy gives $5 and says, I wish for a remake of this podcast, but with everyone being chippy. Well, well chips? You can do that with a like a webcam filter these days, I think. Uh, John Russell gives four ninety nine says, "I really wanted an update version of Riven, the sequel to Mist, when it was a fan remake. Cyan took over production to make me it an official game." Oh, John, they did it for you. Classic yeah. Cyan. <laughs> Good guy, Cyan. All right, I was smart enough to walk the dog before the podcast this week, so I'm just gonna go get my lunch now. Wunderbar. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much for hanging out. Thanks, Eric.